Being 6.30, uh, we'll call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. So moved and Second. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Next item on the agenda is the vote health insurance for elected officials. As you remember, we discussed this at length uh, last week, I guess, was it? Last week. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks ago. And uh, we postponed it till tonight. I don't know if there's a lot of discussion necessary to get on it, so I'll. Mr. Chairman, last last time I made a motion just to get things get things going one way or another. You want a motion here? Good. Uh, move the board of selectmen, pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 32B, Section 2D, vote a policy of not extending the benefits noted in the aforementioned law to elected officials with the following provisions. One, that the elected position of town clerk is exempt from this policy. Two, that any elected officials currently receiving benefits be grandfathered without any loss of coverage as long as they serve their elected term. And three, that should an elected official have a lapse in service and then return to elective office, he or she, he, he or she shall not be able to enroll and receive said coverage. This policy change will be effective Saturday, May 8, 2010. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? Just, well, it's just a clarification for those that weren't here is at this point in time, elected officials will not be able to get, I think there's four, health insurance, dental insurance, there's a life, a small life policy, but essentially that cost would be a savings of about, is it almost $10,000? Per town. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, next item, to meet the applicants, we have some uh, positions open on different boards and there's our policy. Uh, Merlin Johnson, beautification, how are you? Would you just come up and <coughs> say hello and, and uh, if you just, for, your, for the record, just give your name. Sit down, sit, sit down and, and, and <laughs> explain. My name is Merrill Johnson. Yep. So you're familiar with what they do and you do it, so. Yep. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just meet the applicants now, later on we'll make the appointments. And, okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, the next, I believe, is uh, Nathaniel Green. He's here for uh, constable. He's the one that's that not able to be present constable, but we have another constable application. Looking for it here. Are you with us here? Yeah. Mr. Green had many letters of recommendation. He did, many. That's what I was going through. <laughs> uh, Andre, could you come up and just, for the record, give your name and you're familiar with many, <coughs> many of the members of the board are familiar with you, but if you just give your name and the constable position. I'm Andre Farhart. I've been in the town since 1968. Kids and hope to stay here until the end. <laughs> <laughs> we, hope for, we hope that's for a long time. Oh, that's a long time from now, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a long, a long time for both of us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, basically, that's Andre. That's it. We'll be making unless the board has any questions. Well, no. Again, a, n a number of recommendation letters yeah. supported the uh, appointment as well. Excellent. So we'll be making later on tonight making the appointment. Okay, and how will you notify me? Or? Uh, Kim will notify you within a couple of days. Same day. Oh. Or you can watch on Channel 10, of course, later tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a one day wine and malt beverage license application. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, Joe. How are you? Good, thank you. Just come up and if you just give us a 
Sure. I'm One Steve minute. Sonnenberg. I'm a resident of 44 Lawson Terrace, and I'm here tonight for uh, uh, the application for a one-day um, wine and malt liquor beverage license um, for an Appalachian Service Project uh, fundraiser, um, which is to be held um, March 20th from 7 to 11 at St. Mary's Parish Center. Um, the Appalachian Service Project, I think as many of you are familiar with, um, is a volunteer program that's uh, nationally known that sends volunteers um, to Appalachia area of the country, one of the poorest countries in the uh, poorest, poorest areas in the country, um, and uh, they do home repairs. Um, it not only benefits the people that um, receive the home repairs, but also um, gives a sense of volunteerism, uh, compassion for others, and, and community service to the young individuals that um, make this trip every year. We've been doing it for several years. Uh, we send anywhere from 30 to 60 um, students down by bus. Uh, they spend 10 days working on various projects, and then the next uh, group that arrives takes over where they left off. So um, I've had... Uh, my oldest son has gone down twice. Um, my youngest, next son has been there once and is going again this year. And they truly do come back with a, a, a sense of appreciation for what they have here in our community, um, seeing what others have to go through to struggle um, through their daily lives. Great so, yeah, that's Thank just, you. just to confirm, my babysitter went a couple of years ago, yep. and she could not s say enough positive things about it. They work really, really hard, yeah. um, but they get a ton out of the experience. And, so. and I think, uh, just to add, the vast majority of the kids that go one year um, volunteer to go again. Oh, that's great. So. When, do they, when do they go, Steve? April vacation? or? No, they summer? usually go right after school gets out for 10 days, right around 4th of July. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're usually back in time for 4th of July or shortly thereafter, so... Uh, tremendous program, and we appreciate your support. It's oh, fantastic. Thanks, son. Want a motion? Love one. Move the board select and vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverages license to Appalachian Service Project for a fundraising event to be held at St. Mary's Parish Center, 1 Kent Street, on Saturday, March 20th, 2010, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Second. Thank you. Sonny, where can they get tickets for this? Is it um, you can contact me. You can contact um, um, uh, my wife. Um, you know, tickets are available. Great. Um, March 20th. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday night. Thank you. So. Uh, need a motion? Motion and second. We need a vote. Are we all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, thank, thank you, Steve. Steve. Thank you. Uh, presentation and a vote on the sticker committee. A group has met recently and has put a lot of work in it. I think you'll see. We were all given, I believe, a, a packet on the sticker work done by the sticker. So who's going to make this presentation? And, uh, Trisha? I think the whole committee can come up. And sure, you can all come up. Everyone was on that committee. <coughs> Thanks for the, for the work done on it. Uh, who would like to be the spokesman? I'll just give an overview okay. and then, yep. um, as it says sort of in the introduction to the report, is the board chart to me last fall when we had the issues with the seaweed removal, just sort of just look in total at our beach sticker uh, revenue and really what was needed all the beaches throughout the town in terms of ongoing maintenance or enhancements. So I pulled this committee together of folks that you see in front of you and we had uh, a few meetings and everybody um, did research on their own and then brought it back to the meeting. And we didn't only look at um, the beach stickers and the revenue, but also um, all the expenses for the beaches out of REC, DPW, police, the selectman's office in terms of administration and issuance, how the system was working now, what was working, what wasn't, what could be changed. And then what do we need in terms of not only routine or ongoing maintenance at the beaches, but capital reinvestment that if we had funds to go forward, how we can continue to make that an amenity for the people in town that go. Um, so what you see in the report is an extensive analysis, I think, of um, what other towns charge, 
um, not only for sticker fees but for parking. Um, the chief reviewed rules and regulations around that. Uh, Jane looked at our possibility to do online payments for that and also our current mail-in program. Um, the offshoot of all that was we provide so many different ways to obtain, not ways to obtain stickers, but there was a fee for residents, there was a fee for uh, uh, Marshfield residents, there was a replacement fee, there was a fee for a second vehicle, there was a fee for a lost sticker, or if you had a car accident. And it was creating a tremendous amount of additional staff time just to keep track of all the fees. So what you have is the recommendation that's the consensus of the committee, um, pretty much unanimous, I think, for 99% of them. Um, and it was really judgment free. So what you see is really what the committee has recommended. Obviously the board has the discretion at their pleasure to do something different. But this is what all these heads here sort of prevailed to bring forth to the board. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate all the work that went into it. Uh, a lot of times we make decisions on fees based on nowhere near the information that you people provided. So thank you. Uh, open it up to the board. I think, Tricia, before we do that, if I could ask one question. If we vote the recommendations of this report, how will that affect the budget? Uh, in two ways. One is the currently recommended town administrator budget for the rec department has a $13,000 reduction, 10% of the lifeguard seasonal salaries which um, the Recreation Commission, as Jennifer noted uh, when she came before you, would address. If the board uh, adopted the recommendations, one of the major recommendations is to create a revolving fund for the sticker fee. So essentially that money would be restored in the warrant to Jennifer's <coughs> budget, um, and it would, but the housekeeping of it would sort of be reconciled because we'd actually be moving the 120000 out of that line item to, to staff the um, revolving fund. So that would, the, the, the lifeguards would be funded if we accept this. Right. Now, proportionally, if you want to include some other things in there in terms of the itemization of costs across different departments, um, like printing and postage, uh, seaweed removal, that's in DPW in the selectman's budget, I mean town administrator's budget. The other thing is it affects our local receipts because we're taking that money from the sticker fees and out of that line item now. But it would be manageable because we're moving those other costs out of the other budgets too. And Mary can speak in more detail to that, but we looked at that very closely today. So it wouldn't offset, you know, really impact our local receipts in terms of the revenue. So you, don't, you don't see it as a problem with local receipts? Not, no, not for, um, not for next year and mm -hmm. uh, not for this year actually either, for the rest of this year because um, if we do a fee increase, I just would use the difference between coming in mm -hmm. what would be reserved for FY11 for this year. Okay. Would. So would these changes, they say for FY11, so what would you be doing coming up? Would you be phasing in or? Well, we have to create the revolving fund at town meeting. So yeah. she'll have what's in there for FY10. And then when we appropriate the budget for FY11, the motion would have what Mary was alluding to okay. due to reconciliation. All right. All right. This is a great report. You guys, I mean, it's really wonderful to have it all here. And several times the words true costs came in because it's been so hard through the years of just looking at every different departmental budget. And, you know, the beaches are so central to everything we do in town. But to get all the, the money here under one umbrella and the true costs is just fantastic. And this is a, this is a great document. I commend you and thank you, Tricia, and everybody here for doing this. It's really, it's very impressive. Um, I have two very short questions um, about it. On page 11, where you're talking about the um, increasing the um, tickets in the waterfront zones, um, does that include, where exactly are the waterfront zones? I remember when you came before us a couple years ago, I was surprised that some areas were waterfront zones and some areas that I would think would be waterfront zones were not. So right, roughly where are the, are we talking Front Street too? Yes. Okay. That was added, um, I think, in 2007. Yeah. Um, pretty much the waterfront zones are uh, anywhere east of Hadley Road, uh, Sand Hills area, First, Second, Third Cliff, uh, Humlock, Cold Parkway, and the Town Pier in front. Okay. Pretty much the 
east of the east of yeah. section. Sure. Okay, so it's not just the beach parking lots or anything like that. Well, the beach parking lots are in there. Are in there. But so it's it's a quite a I was pleased to see this. It's it's quite a large area that's gonna be affected by this. Um, because I know certainly up in Third Cliff we have a lot of people parking and walking quite a distance to get down to the beach. And so I think it's appropriate that these areas are included in the waterfront zones. The board raised the uh, fines in August of 2007. And yeah. To be honest, it, it hasn't been that much of a deterrent. Sure. $40. Yeah. Okay. And then my other question um, is in the summary. I just was a little confused by, by some of the wording um, on page 13. Um, I was trying to follow along what the, the net increase in revenue is going to be here. It says, if the board adopts the committee's recommended fee increase, the total projected revenue for summer 2010 is 130422 Then it says, a rate increase of $30 results in additional revenue of 105427 And that's what I was confused by. Did you mean a rate increase from $30, or did you mean adding adding $30 and is that being proposed or would that be something in the future? I, I got all sort of twisted around as to what, because it's going up from 25, the, the standard sticker fee is going up from 25, or is proposed to go from 25 to 35. Right. So I was. Second sticker, maybe. What's the second sticker currently? 10. Second sticker is currently 10. And so it's, there's not going to be any discount for a second sticker. So I, I, I was confused just by that what sentence. What happens if the board didn't want to vote 35? We printed all the numbers. Oh, I see. We just voted $30. Okay, so if we didn't go up to 35, the if we went 30, it would be that. That was not the committee's recommendation, but understood. I knew you'd ask the question. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, understood. <laughs> okay, put no, all that's fine. We projections in at $30, too. Yeah, no, I, oh, I see what you yeah. mean. Okay, yeah. Well, I think the 35 certainly makes sense because the other thing, just for people in the audience out there, that we also have before us is the comparative with, with a whole slew of other towns, um, Brewster, Wellfleet, Westport, Barnstable, Yarmouth, Plymouth, Falmouth, um, for comparative fees, and, and our fees are still um, well within the, the standard, um, the proposed new fees, higher fees, are well within the, the boundaries of acceptability. So I, I'm all in favor of the 35 right up front. But those are my only questions at this point, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <coughs> Tony, anything? Yeah, I want to reiterate um, what Rick said. This is a, a very comprehensive report and very well done. And I also want to thank Tricia because Joe and I have been talking about this for, well, a couple of years at least, and to see how quickly you put this into action is, is impressive. So thank you. And now I'll go to, go to some of the pages where I had questions on. Um, one of the things that, that Tricia just brought up is that this money is now going into um, the local local fees. So if we take it out of that, it will impact certain things like the split between the school and the town. So the, the school currently gets 60% of that money and they wouldn't. So we'd have to talk about what sort of corrective measure. And Mary and I talked about that today. It's about 72000 based on the revenues right now, but we would hold the school harmless. Right. So um, there would be no net whatever. Some sort of and So when we percentage. look at the local receipts and some of the other things we've been talking about, financial forecasting and pulling away other expenditures already in those departments, then, like she we said earlier, it, it would be, it would net out. Right. Right. Um, on page six, I had a question. It page six says the town allocates funds to the recreation department for their lifeguards now. How does that happen? It's this, Jennifer, it's the seasonal salaries line item budget that you vote under the operating budget. So it comes out of the local receipts and it goes? No, so no. they raised 116000 in revenues for FY, or FY09 and calendar 2009. And so that goes into the general fund, the 116000 And then we fund under the Recreation Department budget $130,000. That's part of the rec line item. No, no, I know the expense is there, and I know the revenues on the <coughs> local receipts. I didn't, when it says allocates, I don't know. You, the money doesn't actually go over there. It's just, yeah, uh, just you, right, we okay. Good. Vote would probably be a better word. Um, that I had... Um, one of your points, there was a question about, and, and for those people that don't know what the report says, one of the, one of the um, suggestions here is that there's not a di discounted rate 
for additional vehicles for parking permits. So currently we pay $25 for a parking permit and $10 for an additional vehicle. And this is suggesting that we raise it to $35 which as Rick mentioned is within the norm of what other communities are, but it says there would be no discount for a second vehicle. And one of the things that you pointed out here was the concern as to how many people would get additional vehicles at that point. For $10, you thought it would be, it's, it's a nice buy and people get them. And my question was, does it have to go up to the 35? You know, if it was 20, you know, what's that fine line between getting people to buy the extra ticket and the price? So if it was $20 for an additional vehicle instead of the full 35, is that going to take it from 100% to zero? Or did you guys think about that matrix at all? Or? I don't think we did it for the replacement sticker. We did factor it in for like the Marshfield change and things like that. Right. The reason the committee uh, recommended that is when we looked at the other town data, no community had a, a different price for a second vehicle. So that was really the genesis of that one. Yeah, but it's a. Uh, we also did look at the uh, slippage that would occur. Drop off. Say for ten bucks, I'll buy an extra ticket. But we felt like that the increase to thirty-five dollars uh, would be more straightforward and would more than cover the loss of uh, the ten-dollar revenues. Yeah. So it's about sixteen thousand yeah. dollars, is what um, I believe. We didn't account for everybody who bought a second sticker. Right. You put it in a ten. Yeah. yeah. So that was my question. Do you want to just make it more, but just not make it the full? was to simplify the whole process for everyone. Yeah. I think what will happen is after one year of doing it, you'll find out. Did the extra vehicles go from right. 1,000 to yeah. zero, or did it go from 1,000 to... You know, the other was if you have a second car, it's taking up a spark parking space just like someone else's first car. So you think people take two cars to the beach? Um, yeah, and the, the other thing that, that someone just brought up is is right now Marshfield residents can buy a sticker for, someone can help me, $25. Exactly, exactly the same. Right. And um, the suggestion there is not to allow that anymore and to, to offer a fixed number of tickets at the rate of $200 a ticket, which is what some of the other communities do. So if you're not a situate resident, there'd be 300 tickets available at $200 a ticket. Um, From whatever town whatever town um, which was an interesting thought and obviously makes money the, the thing that came to mind to me there is you know I thought that the Marshfield residents would be upset um, because of the benefit that they get but then I started thinking about years ago I think Bob can probably you know Marshfield charges us the commercial rate for water so we pay hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars more in water to to get water to Hummer Rock so I think we did calculate the slippage for that yeah, for the Marshfield folks. Um, the, um, I was also surprised at the, and Chief, you may be answer this, the, the misuse of the stickers <laughs> and how, <laughs> you know, you went into people, the sticker doesn't match the registration on the vehicle, and that we it's. We see it all the time. Yeah, so it is. Oh, oh, absolutely. Right. And they don't tape, they tape them on or they don't have to put them on. Or it'll just be you know, somewhere that where you can't find it or right. you know, you're really going to hunt for it or you'll see them altered or uh, uh, see some pretty creative. Uh, right. I thought that was interesting to see that there's abuses out there of, of the, f the nominal fee that we charge. Um, not to keep going here, but I, I just had one other concern. Um, as you, you talked about going to the different lots and really um, marking out the parking spaces that would be available, particularly at mine it in that, that first lot at Mine It. And I think you said there was 20-something spots there. If you striped it out, you may get up to like 26. And I personally have seen about 40 cars in that lot. And that's, that's the, always the place where people want to go park and there's no spot, even in the secondary lot. So I'd be a little bit hesitant to start, you know. Well, what, what we'd like to do, I think, if you agree with concept of this, then we would take and we'd go to traffic rules and ask for some changes in the regulation. One of them would be that, uh, you know, hopefully these, these lots that all get striped, uh, striped out, and we'd post them that uh, parking only in, in marked areas. So if you're going to park in an aisle, you're going to park somewhere, you're probably, you know, you're going to be in violation. As far as the bigger lot in Minot, 
that's partly uh, paved, partly dirt. Uh, partly underwater. Well, we're going to try to find some way to, uh, when working with DPW, to find some way. Because what happens, you know, they may hold 80 spots. I'm, I'm talking about the one furthest west right. one. But uh, it only takes about 20 cars to, to tie it up if they're parked the wrong way. So right. Try to, to get some sense of... Uh, I guess what I'd say, I'd be a little bit hesitant doing that on the small lot because people generally work it out. You know, they can fit more cars in there and they can maneuver it and people don't block other people in. I'd just be, if you're going to take that lot that can hold, say, 40 vehicles and cut it down to 25, then I just think maybe that'd be a little over-regulation. Over that lot is actually one of the ones that's actually fairly well known. Yeah. Uh, the problems we seem to have down there is that there's some reserve areas for lifeguards people will park in those and then that displays and that right. and, uh, and again just for the audience and the other people what was the other major um, I think those are the major revenue driving things was raising the price to 35 from 25 the second sticker was $35 no discount um, and then selling three 300 non-resident stickers um, at two hundred dollars a piece. If, is that right, Tricia? Thank you, John. <coughs> I think that'll create a problem on just a couple. I mean, I'm all for it, and especially if you can sell three hundred of them. Do you think it would create any type of a problem Fourth of July, Third of July, with residents that have a sticker that cannot park? So I'm, I'm sure you, this is maybe one of those topics that not everyone agreed on. We actually shut the lots off at 9 o'clock. The, the, the lots are shut down at 9 o'clock at night anyway. So in, we actually uh, shut them down a little earlier on the, on the 4th of July, on the 3rd of July. Uh, no, I'm, I guess I'm talking about, you know, uh, during the daytime hours for... Well, I, and that was discussed. Yeah. I, I had that concern that, you know, we could get an influx of... Uh, people that you know are going to be here today and, and not tomorrow and don't care but I think you know we chose to limit it to that number and, yeah. and uh, see how it goes you know exactly I mean if, right. if we find I'm sure we'll be back here you know, yeah. so 314 Marshfield stickers okay so even though those folks traditionally use Hummel Rock that right. was 314 non-resident mm -hmm. stickers that we did sell yep. we don't know what the impact is that's why we did the cap at 300 yep. because we were selling that to the Marshfield residents anyway All right. and I agree with everyone that had said something before that I've never seen such an in-depth uh, report so it's it's wonderful thank you thank each and every one of you and most importantly this money will go towards funding those guards that maybe wouldn't have jobs or the beaches would go unguarded, am I correct? Yeah, I mean, that's really the important point is Driving to make sure the lifeguards are staffed and they have the equipment that they need, which is right. an ongoing challenge. But things like doing some real improvements to right. the parking lot, right. that would create a source. And being able to address the seaweed removal if right. we have that. I mean, a lot of the town's response last summer to that was driven by where's the money coming from because it's $10,000 a pop. Now we'll be able to really respond to that. That doesn't mean we're going to, we still have, have a policy in place in terms right. of whether it's a public health mm -hmm. issue, but we just didn't have a cost center to be able to really reinvest in the beaches. And they're a big part of the town that I've right. come to learn the short time I've been here. Right. And we should really continue to make them the wonderful asset they are. And it's, they're, it's a they're road because we're not even making ends meet right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, folks, thank you. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, just so I'm clear on this, so in other words, your proposal or the pro potential pot proposal is to increase it either to $30 or $35, depending on what this board decides for? Their recommendation is 35 35 okay. So if we increase it by 35 then you're projecting a revenue source potentially of over $230,000? Right. Is that Which in my one? reading this report? Right. That's page 14. And what you do know as it stands today is that the costs that seem to be somewhat I don't want to say static, but in other words, it's about $116,000. That's based on 2009 revenue, or, uh, or, or take that back. That's right. That's the revenue for 2009. 2009. The cost for 2000 and, uh, uh, 2010 you're projecting is at like 174, 174,000, is that it? In other words, 
basically you're saying by increasing it to $35 and including the 300 uh, stickers for $200 that you'll be able to offset any potential deficit. That's right. that's what you're projecting. That's what the the, the, the analysis is. Because the all-in budget's 193,000. So even with that revenue increase at 35, that's leaving us seed money for capital improvements of about 43,000. Yeah. But plus or minus things like Tony mentioned as far as the slippage with the second vehicle or stuff like that. Right. No, I, I I thought it was. I just wanted to make sure I was reading this properly, and that makes perfect sense. And I think it's, you know, the idea of opening it up to out of town people with a set limit I think makes sense and put it out there and see if they're willing to do it other towns do it and I think that's a, a good recommendation and hopefully we can generate some capital to improve the various areas whether it's the, the, the parking lots or you know the equipment or the seaweed seaweed removal so I endorse it it's great thank you motion for the board and anything for the floor before we go on before I ask for a motion Seeing none, we'll ask for a motion. Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to support the recommendations made by the Sticker Committee and the Town Administrator. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. One other just question, well, comment is that there is a line item in here for sea seaweed removal. Mm -hmm. So that is already incorporated in this, so if we have that problem next year. And I just ask that it gets revisited after a year to see what the outcome of all the yep. Good numbers and the changes in the policy, the impact is. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks again, Thanks, folks. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> a little diversion from a normal uh, agenda. We have a walk-in period at 7 o'clock. I, I didn't want to surprise anybody who wanted to come to the walk-in by starting at 6.30. Um, if they expected us to start at 7. So are there any walk-ins? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I apologize for not hitting you ahead of time. I'm Tom McCuska from uh, 50 Gannett Pasture Lane. In, in North Situate Village, there's a couple of items that really get under my skin. And I don't know if they can do anything with it or anything, but uh, one is like parking in, it, down by Wilder Brothers there. They have signs on the sidewalk and everything, private sign, you know, cross at your own risk and everything. And maybe, just, maybe you could ask Brian if you Brian if you can just listen to this one concern here we have. If you could just listen to this concern, go ahead. About the uh, North Situate Village, the parking area by Wilder Brothers. There, they have signs on the sidewalk. You know, private property. Right. No. Uh, how can they put signs on a sidewalk though? It's a. It's it's if it's a right away. I mean, is it? But I mean, is it, isn't it always been a right away there? Uh and situate as town sign audiences, I believe. Without looking at the deed, I, I don't know, but I do know that we did do the research. They do own the, uh, they own the sidewalk and they own hmm. those spaces in front of the uh, uh, Countryway Radio, the uh, travel store. So, so like does the town plow those and everything else too? <laughs> they plow the street. Um, I don't know that they're clearing the sidewalk. So but they're plowing their parking spaces out then? Make clear those you know, I mean, it just I don't, I don't know. just just seems like you know to better not situate. It just seems like an eyesore, and they have signs, you know, signs like in the like would look, appear to be a crosswalk going across. They have like sandwich signs and stuff like that there. Have you talked to the uh, property owners at all? I mean, it's they do they do yeah, own it. Yeah, but I mean, it just it doesn't seem right that you can do that kind of signage. And my other question is, in down by Tedeschi's. The Jersey barriers that are in the park lot. I don't know if that's town property or that's, what a, that's private owned too. And that, it's, that whole lot there is privately owned. Everything yeah. between Tedeschi's and uh, that, yeah. post office is the XEF. I think people think that that's owned by the town. It is not. The entire area is owned privately owned. Is it even so that, that whole parking area between Tedeschi's and the post office yeah. is is privately? That's Tedeschi's the, parking lot. It's owned by the people that uh, own the with the post office. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, all those guys. Yeah, I did not know that. I think Al might have some any information on those yeah, barriers. The barrier was placed there during the uh, MBTA construction, um, and at the request of the Tedeschi store owner, uh, it was a used barrier. It looks terrible. It, we've offered on several occasions now to the Tedeschi's 
manager, owner, uh, that the town would be glad to haul that barrier away. Uh, he still wants it there to protect his uh, cars cutting through and, and uh, causing an injury to some of his employees, which happened several years ago. Uh, he has come up with an alternative that he is working on for a more decorative barrier between those two parking lots. And until he's done with that, uh, we'll leave ours there at his request. Otherwise, we will take it away and dispose of it. Thank you. Hmm. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Before we go, can I just ask Trisha two quick questions? Because I've been seeing a bunch of emails come around about the school, and this may clarify a lot of a lot of questions. I think I know the answers, but coming from her may be better. Um, Trisha, there's been talk about a um, a surcharge to be charged for education, uh, similar to CPC. And it's my understanding that that you cannot just go and assess a 3% fee. The town cannot generate additional surcharge fees to certain individuals. The only way to increase the tax base is through um, a proposition to an half override. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So um, for those of you that may be watching or listening, that is not a legal way to the, – the way that CPC was able to do it is because that was a state-run – um, opportunity for the town or for all towns but a town cannot just say we want to assess a, a charge for students or for any entity to generate revenue is that correct right. okay and the other thing the question that came around that I um, um, again speaking of the school overrides and getting those and special town meeting can or cannot have an override yeah, you can, can you have an override question at a special town meeting? I, off the top of my head, I don't think, I think you can, but I don't hold me to that. They're typically done at an annual because what an override is, is it's anticipation mm. of funding that fiscal year budget that the annual town meeting is doing. So even if you could, it really wouldn't make sense for a general operating override. Now for a debt exclusion, override you could do that at a special but typically for operating budget you do it at the annual because it's for the prospective budget right. or you could do it at the special but it would be for the following fiscal year not the current one right. you don't I mean the thing which, with an override which would be is weird town meeting is the authorization the ballot is the appropriation yeah so it doesn't you don't have to have a town meeting before an override you can have right. an override before you have to do both Right. But obviously, if town meeting approves a higher budget and then the override fails, then you need a special to go back to and balance your budget. Understood. And again, just so people understand, town meeting can vote to approve or disapprove an override, but the ballot is the end, end all, be all of whether it is implemented or not. Right, and same for CPC. So hopefully that answers questions for people that are at sending them on. Well, and that, was, that was the situation we had the last override. Um, Several things passed at town meeting, but didn't pass at the ballot. Right. Yep. So, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, well, we, but we, before we go on, I know uh, we normally, uh, right after Valentine's Day, we make acknowledge the fact that we received some great Valentines from children at Wampatuck School. And rather than wait till the end of the meeting under other business, where it'll probably be close to 10 o'clock tonight, uh, I thought we could, maybe could do it now if you'd like to, if any member of the board would like to, just acknowledge the the uh, students who sent them Valentine's. Would be great. Sure, I would just like to thank um, <coughs> Mr. Mr. Max Horton and uh, some young fellow named Jack. Didn't sign his last name, but it was great. And uh, when I got these and, and brought them home, I, I must admit it, it gave my wife some pause because she says, who are you getting all these Valentines from? And so uh, it was nice to be able to share that this came from the schools. And thank you all very much. It's great to know that uh, we selectmen are appreciated and, and dearly loved. Uh, that might be pretty How's that? Guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go <laughs> and I'd like to thank uh, Kevin McCarthy and Adriana Cowley for, for sending me to. And I'd like to thank them both for spelling my last name correctly. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> and, then it prompted my daughter, Sophia, to give me one as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Hope she spelled your name right. I, I have great. also got two from Juliana Saccone, uh, a very, very nice Valentine, and I thank her very much for sending it. And also I have one from Haley from Wampatuck School, and I just have to read it. Dear Mr. Norton, happy Hots Day, Valentine's Day. Every bunny, B-U-N-N-Y, 
need some Valentine's. This one will be yours. Sincerely, Haley. So, Haley, thank you for, for recognizing you. It might be the only one I got, so thank you. <laughs> uh, I wanted to thank um, Ava uh, from Wampatuck. And um, reading her message, which I'll read just in a second, um, I, I think it's clear that she is a, uh, a fan of Simon and Garfunkel. It says, uh, have a happy Valentine's Day. I'm sending a lot of hearts your way when you're feeling down and gray. <laughs> so I hey, thank you, Ava, very much. Lastly, I'd like to thank Mia for writing Mia Valentine and also doing a little coloring. She stayed within the lines. Good job. I hope you have a happy, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you get lots of Valentines. Thank you for keeping our town a green place to live. Pretty cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Pretty cool. Thank you all from Wampatuck School. We get these every year. and. Uh, we, we look forward to them, actually. I think we'd be Absolutely. disappointed if we didn't get them. So <laughs> thank you all, and thank all the, the teachers at Wampatuck who make this possible. Thank you. Uh, next, number eight, <coughs> discussion, vote, special events, permit for sure. Motion? Or, uh, or wait, let them come up first. Yeah, yeah. come up. And <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and if you could just, once again, identify yourself for the record, and we'll... Sure, my name is Mike Versace, and I'm the race director for the Shore Run this year, and this is... Michelle Hagen. Hi, Michelle. Michelle. And we, uh, our Valentine's cards are in the mail somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can either answer questions. We have uh, submitted our uh, special events application and, and written a letter. Uh, and answer any questions, we can go through. Maybe the, just very briefly, if you would, uh, I see you have, a, it looks like a map of the, of the race. Uh, if you could just tell us where it's going to go and when it's going to be and what people can do to sign up. Sure, absolutely. So the Shore Run is for the benefit of the high school, as everyone knows. Shore is a fundraising organization. It's raised about $750,000 since 1990 for the school, uh, and this is one of our major fundraisers. Uh, this year, it's planned for Memorial Day weekend on May 29th. Uh, registration on the site starts at about 8.30 a.m. when people start signing up, or uh, day of race uh, registrants will. The race starts at 10, formally kicks off at 10, and finishes up about noontime or uh, 12.30 around then. Uh, the race uh, activities are all within Peggotty Beach. That's where the race starts. And we have a map here that shows the course, uh, which is exactly the same course that we ran last year. Um, uh, in terms of number of runners expected, we expect about 500. Last year was a little less than that, I believe, about 450, 460. But from everyone that we speak with now about races and events like this, the numbers are increasing a little bit, and certainly Situate is a very desirable place to come and run. Uh, and we're, we're proud of that. And walk. And walk also, that's right, excuse me. Um, so I mentioned the course is about the same, or exactly the same, I should say. We have a, a program to coordinate the race with businesses and neighborhoods along the course uh, run, and we can go through that with you if you'd like. The primary sponsor this year of the race is Dunkin' Donuts. They're the titled sponsor, and we also have other businesses in the Situate area that are also either sponsoring or providing some um, merchandising around them. Uh, our desire would be, if possible, to, after the race is done, to try to move some of the runners or their families into the town so that they could take advantage of what we have in Situate for, uh, for businesses. Um, we coordinate through you, certainly with, um, with police, fire, and medical, and with the Department of Public Works. Um, and we do have some refreshments also after. There's no, this is not a big food event, but there are refreshments and other things for the runners as they uh, leave and then come back. So that's a sort of a, a, an overview of the race, and if you have some questions or would like to go through the, the, uh, the course, we'd be glad to do that for I you. I think it was the same as last year. Well, I'll open it up to the board if anyone has any questions or yeah. comments. John? I was, uh, I was just going to make a comment. Michelle ran this last year. It was uh, seemed to be a, a good fit for the town. Like they had said, it was the proceeds go to the yep. town. This is a great example of a, a race that uh, this town can fit, you know, for lack of a better word. Um, good luck. And I know it's a ton of work. Yeah. Any way I can help. Too. Good. Absolutely. Good. I'm glad. Yep. That's all. Is the yeah. course route the same as Joshua's run used to be? Uh, what, what is the actual course route? Yeah. Just uh, out of curiosity. You got the map there, so. I'll hold it up and show it. Is it. I don't know if it, is it visible from your, I can bring it up close. No, that's good. No, that's good. As long as the TV can pick it up, can you? Got it. You got it. Good. So, um, you know, the event area is in Peggotty Beach parking lot. 
um, and then all of the participants will just exit out of that driveway, take a um, quick left, and the race actually begins on Peggotty Beach Road. And it was determined to start it that way, um, working with Sergeant Gil Martin, that it would be the safest to have um, all of the participants sort of backing up onto this road rather than starting out on mm. Edward Foster and blocking mm. that road at the start of the race. So we started the race actually on Peggotty Beach Road with everyone backing up um, this direction. <coughs> and then runners made an immediate left onto Edward Foster. Um, this was the um, 5K course. And then walkers were at the back of the group and they proceeded straight ahead out um, onto Edward Foster out towards First Cliff. Um, so runners came out Edward Foster to St. Mary's intersection, made a right hand turn onto a short little stint of Front Street and then Brook Street up Stockbridge and then a left all the way down First Parish, which is a nice gradual downhill run. <laughs> right. um, back through the intersection and then out to the left on Edward Foster, which is the direction that the walkers had started. Out around First Cliff, make a hairpin turn and then back around Crescent and finishing inside um, the lot at Peggy Beach. And that seemed to work out um, very well. Um, it, by starting the race here and coming this direction, we had everyone cleared through this short section of um, Front Street in about 20 minutes, and, and the, um, the police were able to open up this section of the road. Great. Great. Thanks. Further comments from the board? Are any of the roads, are Brook Street closed, or is it just one side of the, how do they? Um, the, the police detail, they actually do close this section of the road, but it's for a segment of time. Right. right. And then once they pass the, run, you know, the last runner through that section, then they open up the road. So nothing's um, closed for more than a half hour, would you say? It's all, only the runners are going that way. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. yes. I'd say the quickest runner would run the entire 5K course, and he was fast, wasn't he? He was maybe 18, 19 minutes. Minutes, right. And the last runner came in in about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. But, th but that was to do the entire course. Right. Thank you. Right. Further discussion from the board? Just one thing. Did Trisha, you this gone through you and everything? Yep. You good? Yep. Motion. Okay. Sure, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to support the 2010 Situature Run on Saturday, May 29th, 2010, per the conditions set by the fire, police, DPW, building, and health departments, as well as the town administrator. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank Thanks. you. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, the next is the vote on the school building committee. Uh, this committee was formed uh, in combination of, of Sue Martin, the school superintendent, and Trisha. I believe we, we spoke about it a few weeks ago. There were a couple of positions weren't filled. Is that correctly? Now they are. We're good to go. As long as we vote it. And we sign it. We hope to do that right now. Uh, any questions or a motion? Is a motion? Yeah. Move the board of selectmen appoint the school building committee for the town of Situa as presented by the superintendent of schools in accordance with 963 CMR 2.00. Second. Further discussion? Just one, one quick question. I, I counted the vote, the voting members. And Joe, you're on there twice. I'm on twice. Do you get two votes? Uh, so I hope not. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't know whether it'd be six. Well, we like Joe. Yeah, but I'm not sure. But Joe. you wouldn't have an even no. number of votes, yeah. would you? Uh, that's a good question, Sue. I get one vote. That's no, I know you get two. But are there six voting members or an odd number of voting members? Looks like you got 11, which well, now it's 10. No, no, no. Far, take, far take right Joe out once and you have six. No, so right. Unless Trisha gets a vote. Yeah, maybe Trisha. I don't know. I count seven. Well, the, the far right column says voting member. Yeah, right? three. So it's not just four. every name. Five, six, seven. Yeah, but you're in there twice. I'm in there twice. Yeah, I count six, counting Joe oh. as one. There's six voting members. You're right. Do you think 
I don't know. I think that's by statute. I don't think we can change it. I don't. I Trisha, are you supposed to be a voting member on this? I don't think so. Sue, do you know? Yeah, uh, you need to be a resident. Huh. Okay. Uh, motion. It's already been made. Motion has been made. Has it been seconded? Mm -hmm. Seconded. All in favor? Uh, quick discussion. discussion. Yeah. Um, <coughs> If you have to be a resident, um, Kevin Cafferty isn't, I don't think, a resident, so he couldn't be a voting man. Or is that? He wouldn't be a voting member. Anyway, some of these are staff people that have to be, like, I have to be on it by virtue of my position. Okay. So is the CCPO. They're okay. sort of to ensure that the laws are followed with the procurement and everything. Okay. So you have an odd number now. This so now good. you have an odd number. So he can't vote. Now that fix it. You have five now. Gotcha. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next. Uh, number 10 is a vote new uh, sewer betterment assessment. Al? Jane? Whoever would like to be the spokesman here. Um, this is similar to what we did in the past, um, the past two Decembers actually. Um, it was brought to the attention of the town that there was a, a typo on the list of that, remember that 650 or so betterments that you accepted and voted to assess to the um, mm -hmm. assessing office and they assessed it to me and, and we collected on them. Um, this one, the um, <coughs> map lock and lot at the end, it had an A, but it should have had a B for 81 Country Way, I think. Yes. So in order to fix that and to be able to send them a bill um, for the full sewer betterment that they're already hooked up to, we need you to vote it to approve it, and then Steve can send them a bill from assessing, and I can collect it, or we can apportion it over 20 years. <coughs> Thank you. From the board, discussion? Have you spoken with Mr. Larson? He brought it to our attention, actually. He's looking to sell the property, I think, so. He's had use of it for the past three years. Motion? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve a new sewer betterment assessment for the documents submitted by the Treasurer Collector and the Director of uh, oh. DPW and further to forward said vote to the Board of Assessors. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number 11 is a discussion of the 2011 budgets and articles. Uh, they are lengthy. We will start with our friends from the school committee, Jamie. See you all. And all. Sue, thank you. All, thank you. Here, I'll slide wherever you want to get. First of all, I would like to the board thank you, all of you, for the work you put into this. We, we witnessed uh, many meetings and saw the anguish and the work that went into it. So thank you all for what you've done this year. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. And uh, I, I guess that there's a couple of things we'd like to start off with, if we could. And, and one is there is a, a number that we're going to present tonight, which we all know the town's facing a similar situation in regards to their budget. I don't think anybody would like to be in this situation in regards to what we have to do. So we're going to submit a number with the caveat that we will continue to work on other ways to find funding to fill the gap. This, this number represents a gap for us of having to cut about a million and a half in cost in order to be able to get to this number. And so we're working a number of initiatives to try to fill that gap. Still knowing that at this point in town, what, at this point in time, what the town can allocate to us is the number that we're going to sit here and present. So um, that's partially a statement for the folks that are out there concerned that everyone's washing their hands and done with the process. That's not the case. We're still looking at a number of different options, including talking with our bargaining units to try to find ways to save money. There's also the, I, I think, Tony, to your point, uh, what was alluded to was the 
there's some discussion as to if, if folks are to ask for uh, an opportunity to stop funding CPC, for instance, for a while, could that money be converted into a 3% school tax, for lack of a better term? The answer to that is no. What we want to make sure people understand is if they go down that path, there are a few things they need to bear in mind. One is there would have to be a, a uh, town meeting article and an agreement that we would not fund that this year. Then there would have to subsequently be an override to fund whatever amount they wanted to move back and forth. So it's not as simple as, great, let's just take from column A and stick it in column B. So the other thing we worry about for the CPC's sake is that you do put that at risk if you take that off it's not like you can automatically put it back on number one and number two there's no guarantee that by taking that off that money's going to automatically come over to help fund the town in other areas so um you know sometimes i think we need to make sure everybody understands that aspect because there is some element of risk involved in that and also the other mindset is whatever is done with that um it would fund in our typical formula the town and the school so it wouldn't be one could just go totally to schools the formula would come back and 66 percent would go to schools and 33 point whatever would go to the town so um i just think it's important to bring that up so everybody understands i know you all have had a rough time coming up with the number that we have it's a reality of where we're at in, in the economy at this point in time um, we certainly don't like uh, presiding over a situation where we're dismantling what we work so hard to build in regards to the override and the like. Um, and again, we want to assure you, as your partners here in, in governance, that we are doing everything we can to mitigate the impact it will make. And uh, so we're not done yet. But we are here to present you with a number. So I'm going to turn it over to our superintendent. Be, be, okay. Sue, before you start, we'd just like to acknowledge Michelle Smith is also from the school committee. Is here tonight. So okay. Like to like that. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in your in your um, packets prepared for tonight, you've already uh, probably seen this PowerPoint a numerous number of times, uh, and, and it gives an overview of all our sources of revenue, our operating expenses. We are working on a level funded budget for next year. It de it de details out uh, our operating revenue uh, for FY10 and 11. Also gives a hi the historical perspective over the last uh, uh, 10 years or so. Identifies the challenges and opportunities, and then we work on strategies on how we're going to narrow and close the gap. Uh, we've identified for you earlier in earlier presentations what our guiding principles are and how we make our decisions and how we prioritize. Dr. Uh, Martin, if I could just interrupt, just a quick yes. question: Is this essentially the same document that's on the web? from Bill John, Mr. Johnston's pre school committee's presentation? Close, I mean, close reasonably to it. close? The first part, yes. Okay, the great. The first part, yes. After um, starting on page um, six, okay. it is different. Yep. Okay. So that first whole part was all review. Excellent. Um, the next part is the guiding principles, how we make uh, our decisions, a revisiting of our accountability goals for the next few years, as well as our mission and vision statement. As Jamie had mentioned, uh, we are, even though we have been given a number of uh, a budget reduction of approximately 1.5 million, it's important to remember that we're trying all different kinds of uh, strategies to consider as we continue to, to work through this. We've identified uh, collaboration with other districts for supplies, reorganizing the administrative offices, uh, reconfiguring grade levels, uh, looking at cost analysis of, of closing buildings, we have also, uh, when we did our first budget presentation back in December, we generated a list of uh, 30 to 35 different ideas from that were came from that meeting, and we are actively exploring that. There was another meeting in um, the end of January, January 28th, and we, from that meeting, meeting there were <coughs> probably uh, five to six pages of additional, <coughs> very thoughtful ideas that, uh, as a district, we are pursuing each and every one of those to get down to. Uh, to see if it is cost cost effective for us to implement that particular strategy. <coughs> in specifically, in terms of um, reductions for FY11, we broke them out into the different cost centers. And in central administration, <coughs> there'd be a reduction of two FTEs, full-time equivalents, as well as a reduction in the curriculum initiative budget. In special education, that area uh, would be four reduction of four full-time equivalents as well as we're planning on reorganizing the <coughs> early childhood center what that means is probably relocating the early childhood center into one or more of the elementary schools which was recommended in an audit from last year 
in the elementary schools, uh, there would be a reduction of approximately seven classroom teachers, uh, as well as it, it identifies eight clerical support staff, but that, again, is a little bit high. It would probably be more like four. Uh, some instrumental music programs will, are also <coughs> being reviewed. You have in your packet some of the um, projected class sizes for 10 and 11, and uh, what the, the average are <coughs> and the number of sections which identify the, the seven, reduction of seven. Uh, Situate High School is looking at a reduction of 7.3 full-time equivalents as well as one clerical staff member. The Gates is a 5.4 professional staff as well as 1.4 support staff. We're also looking in the area of athletics. Um, discussion about eliminating freshman sports, winter track, swim team, ski team, and we're also working on a restructuring of the activity fee as well as the athletic fee. That doesn't mean that everything is completely eliminated. We're also looking at reduction um, in terms of how many competitions that a particular sporting team would have, how much they have to travel, and we're, we're fine-tuning and kind of customizing it to the sports. So basically, uh, when it comes down to the total reduction to close the gap, we're looking at uh, 38, about 38 uh, full-time equivalent positions. and. For this particular plan, it's approximately $1.8 million in reduction. But as we, as we move along throughout the next couple of months, we find out uh, definitive numbers from the state. Uh, and as conditions change, we go back to make our decision-making process to do uh, the least amount of significant impact to the district that we possibly can. Thank you. Uh, and what we'll do, I know there are some people here interested in this, so might want to ask a question, uh, uh, mm -hmm. make a comment. So what I'd like to do is open it up to the board here first, let the board have their say. Uh, again, we, and I'll start it off by saying how much we appreciate all the work that went into this. And after the board, the board has their say, if anyone would like to comment from the audience, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll recognize you and go from there. Open it up to the board. Anything? Sure. Tony? Never a loss for words. Never a loss for words. But you, uh, I just might add, you know, you attended, I think, probably more of these meetings than, than anyone other than the school department. So, yeah, probably is. Right. And I've seen all of you have been at them as well. And that's my first comment here. Um, you have to applaud your group for communication. You've been to a half a dozen meetings that were very uh, well attended, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, that's really just explaining the whole process to them. And, and that's something that... Um, I think everyone appreciates and, and I see as a great impact in a positive way for the community. I, I, you went above and beyond answering every question you could and explaining it. So um, I think everybody is, has, it may not be happy with the situation, but at least should understand it because you and Bill and the rest of the board have taken the time and Sue gone to every meeting and answered every question. So you know, kudos for that. Um, one thing that Jamie did mention that's probably the one that's lingering most on the fence is state aid. We just don't know what that number is going to be. The governor said he's going to pass a budget that is going to keep local aid flat. We've projected it 10% down, which is what uh, um, Representative Cantwell was here last meeting, and he said that's where you should be. And, um, and Senator Hedlund have said the same. So everyone's telling us that our, our forecast is correct. Don't go with the governor's number yet with any luck. Um, that will be a plus, and we'll get some more money for both the, the school and the town side of things. Um, one thing I, and again, we're all in tune in, in, in the communications that are going on with the people out there and their concern with it, and I keep hearing a reading or hearing they, you know, that they did this or they did that. And I don't know if it refers to you guys or they or us guys as they, but... Um, I think we're all they. Yeah, we're all they. Um, just so people understand, they, you know, there, there's not a lot of flexibility with this. There's, there's only so much money, and it gets split the way it gets split, and we're all dealing with really a fixed number. In terms of they, for us, the five of us have about 20 kids in the school system are going to be in the school system. So That's right. <laughs> we, we are proponents of the school system. And I know if you look at your board as well, you guys have this, about the same amount. So, mm -hmm. so as a community, I mean, as groups of us, they, we, we all want this to work. No one is, is, uh, is, is, is happy with the situation. And we're do all doing everything we possibly can to get where we need to be. Because my next point here is we all understand that a quality school system impacts the town, impacts your property values, impacts um, 
you know, people that want to move to the town. And we know that it's a key element of that. So every one of us up here and every one of the, on, the, on the school committee and involved with the school are doing everything possible to get every dollar we possibly can to make this uh, hurt less. Obviously, every community around us is going through the same thing that we are. Um, but um, I know the numbers too very well, so I don't need to go into details of that. But those are the three or four things that stand out to me that hopefully um, you know, people understand. Chairman, if I may, just in, in comment to, to Tony. First off, we appreciate the fact that there was great support and attendance from the selectmen coming to all the meetings and listening. And a lot of times, you know, there tends to be a groundswell that, geez, it's town versus uh, the schools. And that's not really the case. If anything, in the years that I've been doing this, there seems to be a better collaboration than maybe we, we've ever had. Um, but I also want to make sure we, we, there are an awful lot of parents and citizens that showed up, came up with great ideas, are very passionate, um, really concerned about how can they help. And I think that out of this, some of these ideas that we're going to try to run with, um, the idea of an alumni fund, the idea of setting up a charity fund that while you can't use that money to pay salaries, you can use that money to fund other things. Those are all things that we are uh, encouraging them to continue on, that we will support them on, that we think are great ideas that we're going to incorporate to try to help us in this regard. Um, but I, I think w we, we need to call out the fact that our PTOs, our school councils, the parent organizations, um, you know, a, a number of citizens that don't have kids in schools but are very concerned about property values and what happens if your schools aren't great, all came out in support of these meetings. And our, our goal was to make sure they understood where we were at. And from that, hopefully, other ideas would come out that could help us close this gap again, which we're going to be working hard on for the next few, you know, we, don't, we can vote on a budget. It's not a done deal yet. Or the budget might very well be a done deal. What actual amount of money we have to spend isn't a done deal yet. We're going to continue to work to, to build that copper. So that's all. But thank, thank you for your support, too, Tom. Thank you. Uh, further comments from the board? Mr. Chair? Great. Yeah, I just want to pick up on some of the things that Tony <coughs> said. I mean, we are getting a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls, and um, that's good. I welcome those to a certain extent because it shows that people are now actually starting to pay attention and so on. And, and you know, do I wish we didn't, weren't in a situation where we had to whack 38.1 FTEs to come up with $1.8 million? Of course. All right? But the fact of the matter is, and I've said this before, and I apologize to my selectmen because they have to hear it again and again and again from me, but, you know, <coughs> we're in a situation where 83% of the budget or so is personnel. And that's a fact. Whether it's high or low, you can argue about, but that's a fact. And there's cost of living increases and other built-in increases that these things cost, 3% or more, plus or minus, whatever. And that's a fact, too. Whether you, are, whether you like the CBA agreements or whether you disagree with them or whatever, that's a fact. And that number is more than 2.5, prop 2.5. So the money that comes from an override is eventually going to get eroded away over X number of years, and that's the situation we're in. We are acutely aware, acutely aware that every teacher we lay off or every personnel we change or everything that can be perceived as a weakening of the school system is going to affect our new growth, so therefore it's going to affect the town. It's going to affect our tax receipt. It's going to affect our local receipts, which is going to affect the town. And we are all aware of this, and I applaud, as, as these other folks have, what Jamie just said and Dr. Martin and Paul and, and Mr. Johnston in the rest of the school committee, the fact that they're doing this all in open. And it's really a great, great thing that they're doing here <coughs> under very difficult circumstances. And I don't want to sound too defensive about this because, as people know, I tend to return just about every single call I can possibly take. But I have to read one line from an email that, frankly, I was astonished at. And I think this person who shall remain nameless really ought to know better and shouldn't be sending emails like this around. After a long diatribe about they doing this and they doing that, this person writes, they are basically beating around the bush until town meeting and then we'll put it out on the table to stab us in the hearts. And that is just uncalled for, inaccurate, inflammatory, incendiary, and just has got to stop. It's that sort of attitude that contributes to, rather than, breaking rather than break down the barriers, real or perceived between the, the alleged town side and the alleged school side. The school committee is doing a great job. 
there's no pot of money in the town that the town can then go bail out the school committee. People have suggested closing town hall for Fridays or, or um, some employees uh, as part of their job duties are required to use a town owned vehicle to commute back and forth to their home because they do their work. Um, they have a vehicle so much uh, in town that they have midnight calls and so on. That's not going to be $1.8 million. It's simply not going to do it. Um, as Mr. Johnston and his presentation has done before the, with the school committee and many, many times, and the reason why I interrupted Dr. Martin, I'm sorry, Dr. Martin, for interrupting you, it's my comment earlier about is this the same document on the web, and it pretty much is. This document has been out there. There's no they here. This has been fully publicized, fully vetted, and no one's happy with it, but it's the very best we're able to do under these trying circumstances. So I just want to, you know, conclude my statements here by just saying, you know, we're in tough times, but I'm very confident that we're doing the absolute best we can. There were, on that one overhead that I keep referring to, there were 18 or so different options to, um, to uh, help balance the budget, and they've gone through and considered every single one of them. So this isn't etched in stone. No one is going to beat around the bush until town meeting and then put it out on the table to stab us in the hearts. Um, that sort of thing just isn't happening. So if people are concerned, that's great. Express those concerns, participate. But also it's very important to make sure that the facts are, are presented accurately because that way then the participation is that much more productive. Thank you. Thank you. Comments? Just <clears throat> some, I, Rick just said what I had written down, you kind of summed it up. When times are very difficult, it makes your jobs that much harder. Ten years ago when the economy was rolling along, money was flowing, your job wasn't nearly as difficult. So I commend you on the job, each and every one of you have done. It's not easy. Um, thank you. That's it. Thank you, sir. John Dennehy. Well, now that everybody except for you, Mr. Chair, have said something, I'll just be brief. Uh, thanks to the uh, school committee, Dr. Martin, um, town administrator. Um, clearly, times are tough. It's been certainly said. During tough times, tough decisions have to be made. And I think you folks have done a wonderful job in trying to determine that. Your job is to, to bring in a balanced budget, attempt to do so. Those decisions ultimately are going to be made at town floor. The authorization of to do something for this year is going to either come or it will not. And then it will have to go to the vote, and that appropriation will have to be done. So, you know, the people of Situate, you know, these are difficult times. They only need to look at their purse and their pocketbooks and their checkbooks to find out how difficult it is. So, you know, people need to get active. They need to get motivated. But by the same token, let there be no mistake, there is no silver bill, bullet or, or panacea for this situation because next year's budget is actually going to probably be worse. So I think, you know, what you have done is, is put the figures put everything out there for people to understand the dire situation that not just any, not just situate, but most towns around here are facing. And we're very fortunate from the stewards that have been, um, for you folks who have been taking over the school committee and, and trying to get the figures and try to figure it out to at least get through this difficult time. So it's a lot easier, as Sean said and as Rick said, it's easy to be in control during great times when there's ample money to be able to pay for these things. But I think it's equally harder during difficult times to make those tough decisions. So I commend you because clearly news is getting out there, but you're getting out as much information so that everybody can have an informed decision when the time comes for town meeting and if it comes to a vote. So again, I commend you all and I thank you and, I, and also for um, Brenda and also for Mike and of course uh, Bill Johnson. Thank you. Again, I think it's all been said. Thank you all. Good luck in, in, in the next Thank month, you. two months in working at it. Something we want to stress to, to all of your points is that, you know, we're not done. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Right. This, Clearly understood. This is, you know, if, if flash today and no further ideas, this is what we'd be putting before you. Yep. You know, the number is the number. You know, as I said a week ago, it's a procedural issue mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. How we get to the number, that's where we, mm -hmm. where the rubber hits the road. So we need to figure that part out yet. Thank you. Uh, now, I, as I mentioned earlier, any comments from the floor? Anyone would like to make a comment, please don't feel obligated to make one, but feel free if you'd like to make one. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Okay. Keep it up.
Uh, social vote check. Jack Manning. Jack, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Hello, for Jack. You Back again. Another year. We should have said more thanks to her, too. She's done a phenomenal <laughs> job working with us. Thank you, Tricia. Yeah. Social vote check. Jack. Okay, uh, Jack's our representative. Anyone that does not know Jack, Jack's our representative for probably eight, nine years. Yeah, about eight years. I really think great. Now. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. Well, I tell you, I love do, doing it. Uh, I love the support that Situate gives our students, too. It's great. And uh, they've always come through. And our students have done great jobs around this town, as you're yep. well aware. So yep. we reap be benefits from our social of Oak Tech as well. Uh, I can only express the same disdain for the economy that we're having right now. <coughs> uh, it's a tough road to hoe. But I think we, we've come out with a pre preliminary budget, which is uh, an increase of 5% over last year. But that's uh, holding it to the absolute minimum. That's no layoffs. Keeping We had an increase in students as well from our town. So, uh, But we've been able to hold a line. It's level funding, no uh, layoffs. And uh, so the proposal for Situate would be $604,419. Now, I don't know if you're aware that's a 5% increase over last year. However, if you go back to 2009, we were at $635,000. So we are only 5% more from last year, but we're, we were 10% higher in 2009. So we've <coughs> held the line consistently, consistently for the last couple of years. and. Uh, with the cost of materials and things at a vocational school, uh, some of the costs are just out of our hands. So uh, we kept it as tight as we could and still be a functioning school. So. Jack, is it, didn't it go up because of the number of students, though? I mean, this, it, this yeah. is mostly uh, driven by mostly how many by kids students, that we send right. in there. Yes. Sean? Jack, did I see Reed somewhere, and, and <clears throat> maybe you could explain it, if a capital expenditure has to be done at the school, do they see something about a roof? And how is that dispersed amongst, you know, say the roof had to be done, and maybe that's what the it roof was. roof is coming up. All right. Then how does... Again, it goes oh. with the formula that the state gives us. Okay. So it's basically the same idea. Uh, in our case, I think we, as far as the roof is concerned, we are going to be totally... We're only coming up with 48% of the cost between the eight towns. And you, then, the, all right, okay. And then they formula, you know, do the formula after that. Uh, of the 48%, I'm not sure how much ours, we haven't come to a final figure on the roof yet. But the eight towns will only be responsible for 48% in total because 52% uh, will be picked up by the state. But that also is predicated on the fact that they have the money for it. You know, they keep telling us we have the money, but I'm not quite as sure. It's kind of like a condo if there are some improvement, improvements made, you have to. Right. And I think if you've been to the school, you'll notice it was built in the 60s, and it's right. in great condition. I mean, they do a spectacular job as far as uh, maintaining that building. And it's mostly maintained by the students, and then they, they do have uh, their own custodial staff that, I mean, it, the thing is great, great, great condition for a 50-year-old school, you know. Tony? Yeah, Jack, quick question, and this has come up at meetings and stuff, and um, it's difficult to, to kind of grasp. You come in here before us and your budget's going up. Right. And you're saying there's no layoffs at the Votech. Right. But then Jamie just sat down and he said he's got 38.1 layoffs and his budget went down for the second consecutive year. So some of the thought out there is the Votech isn't quite feeling the pain that the regular public well, school is. We're at the exact minimum we can have. If, if we started laying off teachers, we'd have to start closing programs, which would put more students out of the school. I bet if I ask Jamie right now how he's going to make the high school and the junior high school cuts, it's going to be cutting programs. Right, but the students don't have to leave the school. They ju you're just going to get bigger classrooms. If, if, in particular, say the state says I have to have two electrical instructors. Right. If I have to lay one of those off, that means the electrical program is gone, and those electrical students will have to go back to the sending schools. If you have the same thing at Situate High School, 
you lay off a history teacher, you just subdivide those remaining students amongst the remaining history teachers. If you, because we're, we, we can't be classified with a regular high school. We're a unique situation. We're a trade school. Yeah, and I'm, it, it's a great program. We've seen you know, the stuff that they've done, and a lot of kids have come out of there, and it's, it's a really great opportunity for kids. Right. But needless to say, the budget keeps going up for the VOTEC, and it keeps going down for the school, and people are having, myself included, are having time, trouble reconciling that a little bit. Right. Well, a lot of it's material costs as well. I mean, we have no control over... We actually, like a textbook in a regular school, we, we hold on to our textbooks, but we can't hold on to the wire and the pipe and the, the wood and that. We have to replenish those expendables every year, and that's a key cost that separates us from an academic type high school, is the actual materials we use. You know, and that's a major cost for our budget. No, I understand. I but so I bet the school committee could probably say the same thing about well, their expenditures. Well, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, we could all yeah. use... Right. But I get, you know, where did the original budget, you know, come in where it's still, you cut, you cut, you cut, and you still have an increase on it? And I, I was the liaison for years from the advisory committee, and there's a formula that when right. I asked and how you figure no it out, everyone laughed right. at me because there's no way to figure it out. Right. Um, but, again, how do you... Well, again, most of our will be the increase in students. Right. Now, if you look on the list here, say, Abington had a tremendous increase in students. Well, Norwell must have, I see, assume, it went up 89%. Yeah, exactly. And that's most of our costs. You know, it, it's set by the state, but in Situate's case, it's because we had a couple of extra students that go in there this year. Is there any chance of going back to them and having them Cut deeper. Who's them? Them would be South Shore, Votech. Oh, okay. I can always to reduce the cost of the tenants. Yeah, I mean this is our third shot at it, but I can always say that's the recommendation. How many students from Situate are actually participating? Uh, Again, forgive me. Forty-five, for, I think it is. Forty-five. Right and um, the general, what's the, the? How many students are actually at South Shore Votech? Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, it's 500. 500 or so. Or so? Uh, the reason why right I say that is I, I kind of echo what Tony is saying. I mean, I looked at the numbers and everybody's taking it hit. And with all due respect, I see that the numbers are level funded or something. To some extent, it might be easier. And I know this is being somewhat um, um, looking at it in a very kind of strict way, but you know, easier from the South Shore Votec to be able to go from town to town and say, well, it's level funded. We don't need to have you cut back. Whereas most towns, if it were within it, they'd be cutting a lot of stuff. So I, I just. I'm just concerned only because we're all cutting back in our town everywhere. Oh, absolutely. And I, I can agree with Tony that, you know, maybe South Shore should consider trying to do something similarly. I mean, I realize that our cost is going up 5.5%, and I know you said that obviously it would be 10% two years ago, but right. it is what it is now, and I, I certainly think it would be helpful if they would take a look at it and say, you know. We can always look at it again, but like I say, that percentage is mostly the additional. I think we picked up two students this year. And to educate a student, <coughs> by state standards, I think it's approximately $14,000 a year for a vocational student. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the program. Look, what, what you've done with the Marine Center and all over town, absolutely. It's just tough times. And I, our school is taking a hit. I kind of would think that South Shore should also take a look well, and try to tell it to everybody. We could do a lot more. But, uh, you know, level funding is, is what it is. And I understand. I mean, we're all going through it. But... Uh, with a vocational school, it is a little tougher in the, the cost of the materials that do drive our costs up. Uh, you know, like technology and things like that. that we, all these things cost money. We have to have, like just in an automotive, we have to have state-of-the-art equipment that, to get our certification so we can train these students to go out and become productive mechanics. If we don't have that, we start cutting back into that. We're at bare bones now. If we start cutting back into it, our students could be trained in automotive, but they wouldn't be certified and virtually unhirable. That's the thing we have to, that's what separates us from the academic. The academic kids mostly will go on to college for fertile training. These kids are going right from high school to a job that a, a prospective employer <coughs> is looking for them to come out almost, like an electrician, a kid will come out, he, he's got two years of his apprenticeship, pretty well done. You don't have the same from academic. 
And with the vocational, you're getting an academic certification as well as a high school diploma. So you're getting, I taught in a vocational school, so I'm very passionate about it. I, I have my degrees in education. I've taught in the high schools. I've taught in vocational schools. And you get more bang for your dollar from a vocational school, which a lot of people do not realize. They come out, they are employable. They have skills, they have certifications, and they are employable right from the beginning. They don't have to go on for further training, as some do in the academic. These, these kids come out with electrical, uh, automotive, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, carpentry. They are certified, ready to go. And it does work for the employer. John? It does. I hired one a year and a half ago, and he's still working for me. He's a great student. Um, I just had one other question. I know at different years you'd open up enrollment to towns that are not listed here. And <clears throat> maybe if enrollment in these towns is down, then you, maybe you'd go to Marshfield or something like that. And do they pay the same They, they pay a rate that's set by the state, oh, okay. which could fluctuate. Right. Fortunately, Sociobo Tech is at the highest scale. Whatever the highest scale is, they determine the cost of educating a student at a vocational school. Now, the double-edged sword we have at South Shore is during tough economic times, vocational school membership does, enrollment does go up. And we have to service our eight towns. So we don't, we love to get the out of, town, out of town because they just add money to our budget, which takes it out of our towns. And that's why okay, that was on some other years, our costs are lower. But now we're educating our own students. We're almost at our maximum amount of students that we're allowed. So we have to come up with the money instead of Marshfield, uh, Hingham, or someone like that sending students. I mean, it is a double-edged sword. We'd love to have them for the money, right. but we want our first priority is to educate Service. our own students. Right. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Um, just to follow up on some of these comments, as you know, Jack, I'm a strong supporter of everything you folks do. Um, but I just, and I'm glad we don't have to vote on this right now, um, but my, my bottom line here is th this is part of our school system. We contribute money. We contribute students. It's part of our school system. So I don't see it as a <coughs> situate school system versus the South Shore schools. They're all part of the same school system. But having said that, you know, when the time comes, I'm going to have a tough time voting for an increase for essentially one aspect of our school system when the other aspect of the school system is really taking it is, is flat or or less than flat funded. So that's where I am at this point. And as Jamie said earlier, everything's fluid and moving up and down. But, you know, at face value, that's where I am at this point. Yes. As is a preliminary, it also is based on what we're going to get from the state. Yep. Exactly. What I think I'm hearing, and I think you're hearing too, is, is <coughs> thank you for this. And we certainly appreciate all that you do with So Sure, Motec for the So Sure students that are there and for all of the students that are there. But when you go back and there'll be, as you said, future budget meetings looking at these, we'd appreciate it if you bring our sentiments back to your board and, and say that you know, we would like to see, and we recognize as we do at our own school committee, we recognize the, the, the trials and tribulations that go with it. But it may be a lot easier to pass this at town meeting if we were more in line with level funded there is one point uh, a further point before we end this that I'd like to point out one thing about South Shore Voc Tech our old vocational schools compared to <coughs> town schools or city schools is we are a municipality in and of ourselves we pay for our own snow plowing building maintenance and things like that where a mm. town picks up plowing mm. things like that so there are additional costs so like I say you cannot cross sure yep Absolutely. There's so many different variables between the two types of education that we have going here. But, uh, a lot of people don't understand. We are a municipality, and in the, for lack of a better term. That's an important distinction. Well, Te technically, our school is going to be paying. For, you know, we allocate costs to our schools also for water and plowing and all that sort of stuff, too. So it's, it's not as different as, as you might think. Um, one last point, and I know you're our liaison. I imagine that your cohorts who are going to Whitman and going to all these other towns are getting the same feedback as Bad us. As I'm getting it here, I right. can imagine those. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad know. I'm in situate, not yeah. Whitman. Yeah. We are Abington, too. Yeah. We are oh, too. Acid. So again, we're not we're not we're not putting down 
the program or the system. We just want you to go back and we want you to cut oh, our absolutely. costs. Absolutely. Uh, tweak yeah. it. Yeah. Not a problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Treasure Collector. Jane. Jane is going to have the next four or five, I think, anyway. Seven, whatever. Close enough. To need to take a break. Close enough for government work. Okay. Doom and order on the agenda, right? I guess, yeah. Why don't you just go down the, as it's listed on the agenda and. and uh, I don't know if you're doing a different format than other years because we did a different format. Um, can we just maybe close Mark, those close doors? Something I said. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Jane. Okay. Um, well, my total budget for the treasure collector portion, my day-to-day -day office operations. You're so going to do the treasure collectors now? Treasure. Yeah, I'm just All right, following. I'm going to recluse myself because oh, my okay. bank does business with the treasurer, so I'm going to take a walk. Well, I have six more after that, so don't go far. I won't go far. It won't be a long walk. I don't do long walks. <laughs> okay. Um, so the to total budget that I had requested um, was actually $308,817. Um, I saw that Tricia... Um, as she did, I know, with some of the other departments or all the other departments, perhaps, um, did a couple of cuts. Um, basically, I don't know if you want me to go down item by item or what would you like me to? I think just a general overview mm -hmm. and uh, any major discrepancies or issues that, that you see coming forth. I mean, we've got your mission statement. We've got the other documents, but, you know, at that level. Right. Um, Noticing something. Okay. Um, basically, in terms of a comparison between FY10 and FY11, there re really aren't many changes. Um, the salaries are obviously the biggest chunk of my budget. Um, we have three full time people at 35 hours and two part time at 30 hours, so um, who are almost full time. So, um, and that figure doesn't include any raises for three of us, only two of them um, are still eligible for step increases. Um, I don't get step increases. Julie's at the top of the line, um, and Sharon is at the top of the line as well. Um, two of my staff are eligible for longevity, um, and then the 1% match is the other item. Um, in terms of, uh, we try and, and make do. It's been a very difficult FY10 year, I have to say, so I'm very concerned about FY11. Um, some of my line items, the support services is the largest one, and that's where I pay for the payroll. I have made, it, made a change, as I'm sure you recall, by converting the town payroll and having some savings by getting rid of ADP. Um, so there were some additional costs this year because of the conversion, um, but I'm hoping to see those changes, the cost savings in the next couple of years. Um, the other one is the postage. I see the Trisha has cut it a thousand, and um, the postage is the budget townwide for all the vendor checks that go out every week from all the warrants. Um, also, uh, it's the postage for all the town um, bill mailings for all, not the water and sewer, that's enterprise fund, but um, for the real estate tax bill. The town only mails twice a year, as you know, with two remit slips on each. Um, and then um, any demand bill mailings I have to do, the um, world being what it is nowadays, I've probably been sending more plus the increase of the postage so um, my postage budget is really tough to maintain um, but if I go over the 24,000 if that's what you vote then I'll just have to look to that later but there's nothing that I can do to cut back um, I've tried to do what I can we used to provide lockbox envelopes within um, the tax bills for people it, it, it helps them um, return it, I think, if you make life easier. But I've cut back on that. I now have the prisoners printing our envelope at some cost savings. Um, Jane, what's, what technical services? It was zero last year, and it's 77. 
7720 this year? 7,000. Um, that's with some changes Sorry. that Trisha is making. Um, we used to pay for the licensing out of the town administrator's budget for some reason. When they had CJ software, that's how it was done. So I think to try and So this used to be in a different budget, Trish, and we've kind of so allocated it. town administrators, and Jane's right. in charge of it. So, it's a so that's the majority of the increase for the, your budget is technically flat except for that line item. It's actually, yeah, it's a little lower just for the reconciliation because my budget went down by the equivalent. Right. Yep. So. Do we have any other questions from the board? No. Jane, you On good? To the next one. We're all set. Okay, let me go get. Just tell Joe. Can someone get Mr. Norton, please? He's good on the other stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next one, well, will be the tax. Yeah. Could you just let's okay. just wait for yep. Joe if we could. We move ahead. What's the sense yeah, of the board? Right, forge right. forward. Move forge forward? <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll sure. forge forward. Okay. Um, we've done something a little different as well for the tax title budget. Um, in the past, it was raised on the recap, which the DOR is not happy about. I'm not used to in my career doing it that way, but um, we have a lot of accounts in tax title, and I am pursuing foreclosure on quite a few of them. Um, I'm working with Attorney Coppola quite a bit to mm. kind of catch up the past <coughs> couple of years. You have to wait a period of time after you put people in tax title. But we do have a lot of old items there, so some people unfortunately need its additional legal costs that we pay. Um, but if we collect the money, if it motivates people to pay, although it's not directly offset in the budget, but it does help to collect those monies. So um, that is um, estimated at 25000 for FY11. A quick question for sure. Trisha or Mary. Is, this isn't the line item that we put. It is the line item. Yes, so, so now it'll be, it'll be one of the shared right. budgets. But I wonder where we put it in our formula. Is, is it in it, there twice? It's just in one of those other amounts to be raised. No, no, but you know how we have the expense for overlay and then the twenty-five grand for tax title? Yeah, that's where we... That's but if it's in the budget now, too, it may be that'll twice. That'll become one of the shared budgets instead of being with the overlay. Oh, this will be a shared budget. Yes. Okay. Right. So it'll just move down to the bottom of the formula. Okay. Jane, with the it, with the um, the cost, the twenty five thousand, obviously that amount of money comes back in the event that the people were to pay back and pay off. Right. So in other words, it potentially could be a, a zero number if if the town's able to get the money back. Is the cost to from the attorney's fees, those fees could actually be taken back. When we collect pay. it, they do come back. Right. Um, but it's not a direct offset. Um, in accounting for that, okay. so you just bring the money in. So that that's a good point. You might notice too is it's running short for FY. Okay. Right. It's, on it's the running board. what? Um, the tax title is running short, and that was intentional. Jane came to me and said, "I'm running over," right. and um, but as she, I think she very well explained, there's a huge return because when those folks pay off, that goes to the general fund and gets certified as free cash. So maybe it won't be as much as twenty-five thousand next year. We don't know, but it's probably going to be thirty-five or forty this year. Mm. And um, it wasn't probably very transparent to you because Mary just put it on the recap, and that's not the way to do it. So where does the um, hmm. like John that's just brought up a real good point? If you do collect the money, you get your legal fees back too. Where does that money go? General, that general, general fund. fund. It's all general. So it'll just come in. It'll come in our levy number then. Yeah, it comes in yeah. tax lien so that's the number. That's over the levy. Yeah. And it, then it gets broken out. So this is a one time, it, this doesn't get revolving. It goes, if it goes back in the general fund. So is this just like a housekeeping article? Yeah, it's just which just kind of. It's just another operating budget that had been raised on the recap because the Mass Laws said that if you didn't provide for it in your budget, then you must provide for on your recap the amount of money needed. For tax right. So now we're providing for it in our budget. So now we're providing right. for right. it in our budget. Okay. So. Okay. Makes sense. Um, I don't know if Joe will come back in this. The contributory group insurance. Um, there is an increase, not surprisingly, I'm sure. Um, let's, I, let's wait for him on that oh, one. Oh, okay. Maybe do like the. 
Federal tax, maybe? Which non contrib, that's good. Okay. Nine ten? Yep. I actually inherited this year from um, <laughs> uh, Mary Gallagher because it just made sense. I do the contributory pension budget, so it just made sense. And um, as I'm sure you recall, there are five survivors now at this point who um, were town employees before the retirement system was put into effect. So um, this is the budget for that. We pay them through payroll um, once a month at the end of the month. Move on Questions, somebody? anybody? Yeah, I mean, it's not optional. These it's are not optional. Well, there it is. On the system before the Plymouth County one was in effect, so. Would you like me to do okay. the. Okay, hold um, on just a sec. Joe, we've done. Um, we did the treasurer collector, tax foreclosure, and non contributory. So maybe we could go back to 914. Is that okay? All right, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Um, as I was just saying, there is an increase. Um, I, at first, had, upon the recommendation of the Plymouth County Retirement, used an 11% increase, but then at a meeting in December, they changed that to 9%. I used the enrollment from November. It's an ever-changing number. Um, tough to gauge if there are layoffs. There could be, you know, this could be um, uh, overstated. But um, that's the figure I have right now based on those enrollment dates, which is sometime in November. I could tell you exactly when, but. Why is that so high? Just a quick comment. Any overage that this will have will need to cover unemployment on the other side anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. okay. And this is our, this is our largest mm. single line item budget, isn't it, I think? What is it, 3.1? 3 3 point one. Point one? Yeah, 4.1. Eight, almost, four point 5 eight million. almost five million. Four point eight nine five. Insurance, yeah. Oh, yep. Sorry. Any questions? No. Okay. Um, Plymouth County retirement. That's a set amount. There is an increase this year. That's um, nine eleven. Um, Trish and I had gone to a meeting back in the fall. Uh, we were aware uh, that there was going to be an increase. Um, I, I had put in the, uh, the lower number. We each year get two numbers. One is for semi-annual payment, and the other one is for an annual payment. So um, we save $63,000 if we pay it. Um, I mean, it's tough. We do it. It's due July 1st, but um, there is a savings. So. And just basically, this this pays for the retirement of town employees. Right. Simple as yep. that. And it's a set number; it's not negotiable. So. It's about um, four hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Yeah. There has been a bill filed to push out the funding schedule. I had Jane check with the county retirement folks last week to see if they're inclined to have any wiggle room based on that, but. Um, at this point, they're not moving off the number. Um, I've had some communications from the other South Shore managers about sort of pushing that discussion um, because it is up for us 400000 which is quite a bit of money. Um, What's that percent? Is it 11 or 12? It's percent increase. something. Yeah. It's in the front section of the budget. So, Trisha, help. Uh, they recalculate, I mean, obviously the stock market goes down, they become short on the funds that they the assets, need to pay right. people's retirements. Yeah. And how often do they re, uh, recalculate and say, oh, we're... And there was a question about that at the meeting we attended as to what date they should use, whether or not they should use the January 2009 number. I think that their assets have improved, that they have recouped a lot of the funds that had been lost, at least that's what they had been saying, but I think they don't want to disperse those funds and those savings at this point. They want to keep it in reserve. Right. It, it's 13.03% that it's up, and um, 
the thing is, is that it should really be higher based on they had their actuaries there and did a presentation. So this is like split the difference between um, the funding schedule and the investment income loss and the loss of the sheriff's department, which is a huge hit to the member communities. So it's really, even as high as it is, it wasn't where they wanted to be. Did we ever hear back? I, I emailed Hedlin about that. Did anyone ever hear back from him? Remember how we, we ended up taking the, the liabilities mm -hmm. from the sheriff's department, but not the asset? I thought I heard that that was resolved. But I haven't been uh, I, to I a haven't, meeting I haven't for heard that. I don't, and I don't that. remember a little going back. And I think it's just, what it does show is sometimes you, uh, things that happen on a state level, like months, six months ago, or whatever it was when the state took over the sheriff's department, I think everyone probably read about it, but didn't have, didn't realize at the time what effect it has on every town in Plymouth yeah. County. Right. And it has a major effect, and, and, and things like that go unrecognized quite often by people, including ourselves, until you come in here and say, you know, this is what, this is what happened as a result of that action by right. the state. Um, so. um, and, uh, you know, and I just thought of something, and it's back on the contributory um, health insurance budget, because we will get the final number at some point in the spring. And I think last year we made a change before town meeting um, because we got the actual rate. So that's something I'd have to look at at the time, the budget that's um, 4.985. So. One last question for Trish. Is, it, is that supposed to go up next year? And how many years is it supposed to go up 13%? It is. I mean, that's why the funding schedule is really important. They have to review the funding schedule every three years. They just did it last year, so they have two more years. But the bill that's been filed would push it out from 2030 to 2040. So that wow. would uh, be a considerable change. Um, but it's going to go up every year. Maybe not this dramatically, but it's still going to go up. And, you know, What's happening is folks are living longer, and so um, they come into the system 62, 65, between 62 and 65. So that, that's really driving it. Payroll wages are a factor of it as well. If we pay people more than other communities, then that drives our assessment as well. So there's a number of different factors. Now, according to them, they say that the current employees with the 9 plus 2 percent, 2 for the over mm -hmm. 30,000, so they're paying 11, but it's the other people, as Tricia said, who are retiring, that they're contributing, no, they had contribu contributed 5%. only 5%, 8%. It, it doesn't work with 11, it doesn't. though. It doesn't work, period. The math doesn't, mm -hmm. does right. not work. One number is bigger than the other number. Right. And like Tricia said, people live longer, so. Which, which isn't a bad thing, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make that perfect. No, clear. Perfect. <laughs> anyway. Um, but we can't solve that problem. No. no. Uh, dictated what it is. Federal taxes. Federal taxes. This is the Medicaid. Yep. Medicaid. The FICA contribution. portion. Um, and I saw that Tricia had reduced that number, which I can live with again. The expectation is there'll be layoffs at the school. I used a projection from, I used the actual pay to date through November or December, I think, probably November. And then I estimated forward to the end of fiscal 10 to get my figure um, and then uh, Trisha reduced that not really that much but uh, going to unemployment maybe. yep so any questions on that not really okay well, any debt and interest? Uh, the debt budget is really complex as as you know, um, Tricia had a discuss discussion with you about whether or not to delay the bond, which I was going to do next month in March of 2010, and put it out to 2011. Part of the increase on this budget is due to um, mandatory pay downs. I've been rolling this bond for a couple of years, I mean the ban, the bond anticipation note, the short term for a couple of years now when you do that, once you go forward into that third year, you know, when it's two years and one month or whatever, you have to do a pay down. So uh, this is, as you know, just the general fund budget. It includes the debt exclusion, so um, it's about <coughs> half and half. I think um, tax supported is 1.2 million and then the debt exclusion is about 1 million. Um, and these have been 
already in existence. We've discussed them before. If you have any questions, I do have my list here of, of what the proposed budget is because this includes what's in place already, what has been bonded for long-term principal and interest, plus the proposed debt. Questions on that? Well, when you say proposed debt, you're just talking about the ban. Um, I'm talking about what's yes, the the ban. Um, just stuff that's downs. already been borrowed, authorized. So there's yep. no new purchases in this number. No. So the a capital plan so, of zero. Um, oh, number. nothing for the capital plan. Um, everything that I was aware of back in November is in this debt budget for the general fund. Right. Just so everybody knows that yeah. this the stuff you're talking about is stuff that was authorized at the last town meeting. Right. Yeah. It's nothing nothing new. And at some point capital plan is gonna come before us with Well nothing capital in. plan it also includes enterprise stuff though. Doesn't that, enterprise. that what that doesn't but affect this does, the budget. But this doesn't right. affect right. so when you say no capital plan, just wanna make it clear though, enterprise fund things might come over with capital expenditures, but they'd have to be funded through the enterprise fund, so that's not part of this. Right. Well this more importantly, her number doesn't have anything new in it. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah level debt yep. and I I do the um, five enterprise fund debt budgets and there is some new money in those but they present them yeah. separately yeah. to you so now when you have to pay principal down on that ban yeah what what time like is the time period shorter than it would have been because what do you save about 25 or 30 thousand by not bonding it the issuance cost but the town has been getting premiums and um, that has been paying for the issuance costs. Um, but what happens is the ban is maturing March 19th, so I'm gonna roll them out for a year, so then we would have to do the pay downs in March of 2011, and then we'd have the bond, and the first bond payment wouldn't be into FY12. Right, but the pay down is over how many years? Like if we were gonna bond something for 10 years, but they made you do a pay down over three years, you know what I mean, like the asset, how much principal do you have to pay for a pay down? Um, I have a schedule of all the pay downs if you'd like to. No. <laughs> I can email Just tell me it makes sense curious, to do it but not that curious. You still know the life of the asset. If it, depending on the statutory limit on how long you can borrow for, in some of them um, you're going to have to vote the increased life because it's on department equipment is five years right. unless you vote otherwise, which you know, in our discussions at financial forecasts and such over the past couple of years we've talked about. So because that they have a useful life, some of it's DPW equipment. Um, so they can only, if I've short term for three years and you're gonna vote it has a 10 year life, then it only goes out seven more years. You answer my, yeah, so you have to put the number of years, know? yeah, with the asset. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jane. I think Welcome. Anything else from the board? Nothing else, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Good night. Uh, we haven't been taking a break at all during the past year, but this is a rather lengthy agenda. I'll leave it up to the board where we're going to go into the town meeting article so you can see what we get left. Does the board feel like they want to take a five minute break to stretch the legs? Yeah. Yep, done. Five minutes. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Thank you. Going back into session. Uh, we're now on town meeting articles. Uh, in your packet, the first article <coughs> is compensation for elected officials. Uh, selectmen, chairman of legitimate expenses, 1500 Selectmen, $2,000. That's four at $500 each. Uh, chairman and legitimate expenses, $1,200. And assessors, uh, $800. That chairman and legitimate expenses is $1,200 is for the assessors. Uh, personal services for the town clerk, $57,371. That's Article 1. Motion to accept or to support or not support? I'll move Article 1. Move to support Article 1. And I'll second. As written? Is that how it's written? Motion to move to move Article One as written. Uh, all of Benice. Do I have an opportunity? You do. Yeah. <coughs> when we last met on this particular subject, I 
we disagreed, and it's clear that we disagree tonight. Um, I mentioned in the memo that I, I, I sent about a week or so ago to you that I would like to speak to this article on town meeting. And um, the reason I would like to speak to it is I have gone back over 20 years of the town clerk's salary. And one of the comments that was made the last time I was here was if you start low, it takes some time to build up your salary. I realized as I thought about that afterwards, well, this is about one of the oldest positions that exists in town government, the town clerk. And it's centuries old. And it's time, really, I think, to think about it as being a real job. Um, I'm considered a manager. I go to managers' meetings. I have not been told that there's anything that I am not expected to do that other managers are expected to do. Despite that, despite the responsibility of the position and my understanding of part of the way a judgment is made about the salary for any position, a managerial salary, is the liability of the position to the town. I don't think there's any doubt whatsoever that the liability that the town clerk bears for this town every day in every category I can think of in terms of what I do each day is very, very large. I have looked at the salaries of other managers. I make almost $10,000 less than the next closest manager to me. If you take an average of the salaries, the average salary here is $75,000 plus for managers. I make $55,700. I made $55,700 last year because it was frozen. And going back and looking through the 20 years of the salary for the town clerk, we have heard several times tonight about taking a hit because the times are bad. It looks like the town clerk has taken a hit in good and bad times. And I think this is a very, very difficult time. I work every day with a budget, and I try to stay within it. I have just done two elections, which were not in the budget and not on the schedule, and I know the efforts that were made in order to make that as least costly to the town as possible. I think the disparity in the payment, the compensation to the town clerk is not understandable. And I have a feeling that the townspeople would be very surprised, as I was, when I saw all of the budgets for the very first time this year, and in seeing all of them, found that the compensation for the town clerk was so unbelievably different from the remainder of the managers. I have been told that it takes time. One of the things I also observed is the number of departments that are now run by managers. Originally, maybe at most 20 years ago, they were run by committees. And then, gradually, they had managers. Those managers have been in those positions, certainly for a shorter period of time, than the town clerk. The other thing I would like to mention is that as a part of being an elected town clerk, and I'm honored to be an elected town clerk, the town clerk does not get longevity. The town clerk has no buyback when it comes to uh, vacations or to sick leave. There is a $650 compensation for a registrar which is entitled, the town clerk is entitled to in this town based on the number of people who are registered voters in the town. That compensation has not been included in my salary and it's voted as a separate line and should not be included in my salary and I have not received it. And I think that the townspeople are really going to be interested to know that the Board of Selectmen 
perhaps because this is an elected position and does not come under the Board of Selectmen, does not come under the town administrator. It is an independent position, which is also at the same time requires a very delicate balance of working with everyone while remaining independent. I do think the salary is something that should be reconsidered. It is a very difficult time to be going against the tide. And it's a very embarrassing thing to be going against the tide. But I think it is appropriate for the position of town clerk to be properly compensated. And I think when you compare what has been done with salaries across the board, this is a case of the town clerk is not a part of a personnel plan. Maybe there should be a separate personnel plan and a separate set of criteria. But I would like to know what criteria the town clerk does not meet that warrants this level of compensation. And I have yet to be told what that is. Thank sure. you. I have a question. I wasn't at the last meeting, yes. um, and so, and but I'm, I'm hearing you speak here, and uh, you, just something that you said there near the end, Bernice, was that um, because your position is is independent, were you implying that there's some sort of feeling from this board that your salary is low because you have an independent position? Is there some sort of retribution going on here? No, I don't think it's retribution at all. I think it's. I just want to make sure I understand oversight. what's going on. Okay. Because it is independent. It is separate. It's, it's not considered at the same time you're looking at a personnel plan and you're looking at perhaps overall the fact that there are perhaps unions that are covering okay. other no, areas. Okay, I understand your point type of thing. Right. There's nothing at all that I take as personal yeah, in yeah, any yeah. of this. Yeah. I do think it's a real professional concern. I think you have a professional concern with having good people do this job. And I've heard several times, not tonight, but several other times as I watch the meetings, that you get what you pay for. Well, in this case, I think you're getting a lot more than what you're paying for. Thank you. As, as, uh, as you know, Bernice, as you mentioned at the start of uh, your discussion, regardless of what the board does tonight, you have the right, the, the, right, the option to go to town meeting. And, and have town meeting vote what they feel is just. So yes. I think you're aware of that. And, and uh, 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 just a just a quick comment. Um, you know, I haven't been on the advisory committee for six years, and, and here for a couple, and having looked at the budget each year, I can say unequivocally that that's not the way it's looked at. I mean, we already we always got your budget, and it, it didn't matter where it was funded from. We were kind of just looking at it as as another department. Now, in terms of the dollar. Um, you know, I never really took the time to say, okay, was man one manager to manager. You know, it, it's just income. Most of the pay that I saw over the last years just came at the recommendation of the town administrator. So it, it really wasn't, and it, I can't remember in any meeting that I've been for for those eight years where we've ever said, commented on anybody's number. Of, I, don't, of, I don't believe you have, and I, yeah. I very much agree with that. I don't think anyone's even noticed. Last year, I wrote a memo when I was level funded to all of you. And I pointed out that that was level funding. And I was concerned that it was level funding for an elected official. And that the concern I had was that my salary was visible because it's in an article by it itself. Whereas everyone else's is included as a part of essentially the bottom line. I don't think anyone at any time, I served on the advisory board mm -hmm. for three years, I never specifically looked at the manager's salary. I never saw that there was this kind of a discrepancy because I looked at it as the bottom line of what that department was doing <coughs> and whether it was up or down. Right. But my point is that I don't think that it was ever looked at that way. As you just admitted, you didn't look at it that way either back right. then. And it really was just at the town administrator came and said this is what it is and this is what the increase should be and it goes and coincides with this or that and it was voted approved for i mean i don't even know how many years you've been doing this but every year that i've been doing it you've been doing it so i've been um, doing it for yeah. seven years and when i have put down my salary which essentially has been the town administrator's recommendation i had no idea of anyone else's salary this is my first time right. ever seeing every manager's salary 
and that's why you're getting the response you're getting from me now. No, no, I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it, it wasn't at the it wasn't at anyone in the advisor board or any of the selectmen's um, I really agenda or um, or really thought process to manipulate the numbers or you know I don't think there has been anything intentional about any of this. What I am saying is I think it's very important to know that you have oversight over all of this. And the town pretty much votes what you recommend. My bet is that the majority of people in town think exactly the same thing I thought, which is I am not paid well, but I bet no one else in town is paid well either. It wasn't until I saw salaries and realized how poorly I was paid that, frankly, it, it just seemed the disparity is unjust, and I'm looking for fairness. John? You compared yourself to other managers. Have yes. you uh, compared yourself to other town clerks and other towns similar to Situa? Yes. Do and we? out of 12, I'm the, I think, the 10th lowest paid. Do you have that? Um, have you given that to us before? That's in, in your past? budget. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Benice. We have the article in front of us, and the recommended uh, salary for Benice is $57,371. I had made the motion to support this, and Sean had seconded it. Just This is an increase of 4%? Um, it's an equity adjustment of 3%, which I don't know if it was clear in Mrs. Brown's con comments, but there is a raise for her for the 3% that she didn't get last year. But the Board of Selectmen and the uh, assessors aren't getting any increase. That's correct. Actually, your expenses were cut. Okay. So, so oh, essentially, sure. the increase that maybe she should have gotten last year is this year, and it's this an year equity adjustment. it's flat, just like everybody else's. It's an equity adjustment, and there's no con any okay. increases in the FY11 proposed for any other staff. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Revolving funds. Uh, move Article 2. Motion's been made to move Article 2. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 3. Uh, establishment of the revolving fund for uh, B stickers, fees, etc. Move Article 3. Second. Second. Hold on, I wrote a note up here. I just want to see what I'm making. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what did I mean? Change a little bit. Um, Where did you get it? Okay. Before local response. I think we cleared that up. Somehow you and Mary worked out the, the change in local receipts over the other stuff. That must be what I was trying to say. Uh, article four. Uh, three, we uh, have to vote. Three, excuse me. Uh, all in favor of three? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's your name. Is article four, the capital improvement plan? Not yet. Not no. yet. So we'll postpone that. We'll hear that on a later date. Uh, fiscal year 2011 operating budget. Now. No, we're not no. doing that. Not yet. No, we're not going to do that. Okay. The next one's 11, right? Six. No, six. 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 We're, doing, six. we're doing all well, movers. We're, we're going to do the enterprise funds. We'll do six first. No. I'll, I'll move Article 6, the waterways enterprise fund. I'll okay. second that. I wasn't going to second. I'm only paying it. Discussion <laughs> on Article 6? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I just wanted to add that this number has changed from the number that's in Mark's budget because. There's an appropriation for the Marine Center in yep. there for O and M operations and maintenance. Yep. And does this have a capital plan in it? It does. As are his P and I's principal and interest. It does. Plan. For new purchases in this year. Golf course has been postponed, has it? The, One uh, second, Joe. Uh, I'm sorry. Did they the interest for new purchases is that in there? His capital. I don't know what he has before his capital plan for this year. Yeah. See, I don't think we can vote these yet. Any of capital? Does Mark have capital? Well, I don't, until the capital plan gets done and you figure out what the interest is for this year. Right, oh, I wait, does he? Jay hasn't gotten anything, I don't believe. Yeah, it. you're right, Tony. This yep. is his operating. Just operating. And this, yeah. But interest is part of the operation. Hold on. Well, 
it depends on when you go out to, to ban. Yeah. And she didn't get, ban at all next fiscal year. She, she actually, if she ban near the end of the fiscal year, she's not going to. It wouldn't be, a, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be an interest payment until 2012 anyway. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, he, he So did. we can vote it? You can hearing, vote it. I'm hearing that. Mm -hmm. Kim, is the golf enterprise fund, are we? That's for the 23rd. That's going on the 23rd yeah. due to the recommendations yeah. of the Bob Sanderson, which we haven't heard right. yet. So we need to vote six, Article 6? Six? six will vote. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Seven was postponing. Eight, waterways enterprise, uh, wastewater enterprise. That's, no, that's postponed. Eight, Next week. They both hold those. Yeah. So it's a transfer. Article 10. Yeah. Ten. Article 10. Move Article 10. Second. Uh, <coughs> discussion? Article 10. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 11 of the Stabilization Fund. Move. Two. Article 11. Yep. I'll wait till we All move right, article, article 11. 11 has been moved and seconded Second. discussion is the oh. is the language any different the way it was last year nope it's the exact same where it says here um, the levy net the levy limit does that not include the expenses so the levy comes in we think the levy's coming in at 51 million and it comes in at 52 million that dealt as a million it doesn't deal with the the expenses it deducted from that now. We need to raise the total amount we can raise, right? Okay, for a levy. The total amount we need for our budget, which if it's less than the <coughs> total levy, then the difference between that will then go into stabilization. So let's say our budget is fifty million dollars right. and our expenses are fifty million dollars, and we raise fifty million and one dollar. That one dollar goes, and then it's a whole other thing that takes. If we only spend forty-nine million, right. That million that goes to free cash is okay. So it's just above the levy limit that we are projecting here for right. our budget. You, know, you just don't know what's going to happen by the time you do set your tax rate. Right. So this at least gives us an opportunity to put something in. So it's only the revenue side. Uh, motion been made and seconded on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. The water main project's relocation has been uh, withdrawn. Uh, chapter 91 liability, Article 13. This is a uh, yearly article, I believe. And this is the same wording as previous years for 91 chapter? Exactly. Yeah. Move Article tw I'll, I'll move the article dealing with the uh, Mass General Laws Chapter 91 liability. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So can I just to get back to Tony's point yep. on stabilization and what Mary just said? Um, in '09, we that, that difference was 170 thousand. Last year it was 9 thousand. So it's not a big relief anymore. In FY08, it was 486 thousand. Right. So it's a number that's changed dramatically. And so, you know, it's I think it's good to put in context when people ask, you know, why are the challenges on the revenue in addition to local aid? Is we had two million in free cash four years ago. We had a substantial amount of money we could put into stabilization because of that article, and those are all gone right now. So that revenue stream that we had before that we were generating is also, you know, adding to these challenges we have on our revenue stream. But that may have been caused by new growth. If we projected new growth to be 500, and it really came in at seven, yeah, then true. all that money would go to stabilization. Right. Yep. 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 And then you had the overlay issue, too. Right. Uh, did we vote that, Kim? Yes. We did. Uh, 16, Workers' Comp Trust Fund Statute. Tr Tricia, would you explain that? Sure. This is, um, <laughs> I talked quite a bit about it at my budget um, review. Uh, the Workers' Compensation is, um, is, is uh, Chapter 41, um, whatever it is here. Hold on. 40, 13, 40. So um, 13A and 13C. 13A, when the town accepted this, means that um, we appropriate a bunch of money into it each year, 160000 traditionally, and that money comes out. If there's any balance left on June 30th, Mary has to move it all out into a special revenue fund. What's traditionally happening is you have a deficit in that account based on active workers' compensation claims, so Mary's moving it over because that's Section 13A. Section 13C allows you to really operate it like a true trust fund, which means all the money, all the interest, 
stay with it. And, and that way we don't have this problem with the deficit or stuff like that. So she has, um, we ran the numbers today, there's about 180000 in the revenue account, um, special revenue account. But the operating budget for workers' comp has $18,000 left in it, and it's only February. So she has to do this manual thing whenever, whereas now it will just be a trust fund and we can operate it that way. So really, in my mind, it's a, it's a, a change in the financing, but it's important because you're just going from Section 13A to 13C as allowed under the statute. And on the good note, too, we bound um, the coverage for stop-loss insurance last Wednesday. So there's a specific dollar, 350000 maximum exposure. That premium is $33,000 a year. I increased the budget 40000 as you know, and that's just essentially going to cover that. But I think, you know, we can feel, breathe a little easier in terms of going in the right direction in terms of the management of this account going forward. Did you get all that, Bob? Because I have to write <laughs> it all down. Okay. So one claim can knock over $350,000 this, with this policy? Yeah. Our maximum exposure on any one claim is 350, and we have to think of it in the context of someone in their 30s getting permanently disabled on a work Long -term disability yep. injury. Yep. We have two right now that are over 150, 100, approaching 150,000. So um, obviously we could go to 300,000 stop loss or whatever, but this is a start in the right direction because the premium is like a 10, $8,000 difference. We looked, at, I looked at all the specific dollars, but this is something as you know that I was. After IT, this is my fir first concern, so I think we're good now. Yeah, where did what, we see? We were so somewhere, and someone brought it up about a policeman getting shot, and we said, "Do we have this insurance?" Where, where, yeah. where were we? Yeah. Yep. Well, we have a MMA, premium now for yeah. the IOD. We're on a like you know an insurance premium. This is self-funded for us, and it's also liquid. But again, you should have. I, and I talked about this at my budget review three-quarters of a million in there, probably, because it's a percentage of your total payroll and personnel. Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. <laughs> uh, okay, did we vote that? We didn't, no. no. Motion's been made. Well, Article 16 is written. And the second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. 17, Educational Center for Police Officers. Tricia? This I have as a placeholder. Um, if the board's not comfortable voting it tonight, they don't have to. We can talk about it at a later meeting. Um, as I'm sure you read the newspaper today, the police department has filed a lawsuit against the town for its failure, alleged failure, to pay the Quinnville distribution that was due to them January 15th. Um, as you know, this is an issue statewide, and it's being uh, dealt with with a number of communities. Um, the, the issue of contention is that the town has language in its collective bargaining agreement that says it does not have to make its contribution if the state does not make its equal contribution. Um, but there is a matter of um, dissension because it does it's allegedly rep re um, reference another state law that said that this particular statute, the Quinn Bill, was exempt. So given that the town was very clear in 1999 that it accepted the Quinville an educational incentive for officers with the expectation that the Commonwealth would reimburse it by 50 percent and has now discontinued as July 1, 2009, the entire program. Uh, it was funded at 50 million in FY09. It's now 10 million by the state. Um, I think it's for town meeting to consider whether we should revoke um, acceptance of the Quinville because, in fact, it no longer exists. Um, where, where this is uh, in flux, more or less, it's, I would suggest that we don't vote it one way or the other until we see what happens. I mean, let's, we, we could vote this tonight and have it all changed by a vote of somebody. That's fine. I would wait until your last gas If the board feels fine. differently, that's fine, but I just assume hold off on it. And, um, th and the other thing, uh, let, lest my words be misconstrued, um, we're in bargaining with the police <coughs> union right now over this issue. I'm hopeful that it can be resolved, but also that um, I, and I know the board, strongly supports educated and qualified police officers. So this really isn't about the town's desire to have competent um, police officers educated by uh, education and experience but it's a matter of really the state reneging on its promise to the town. It's $125,000 to us each year. So if we were That's to make state. up this difference, no, it would be 
It's a $260,000 appropriation with the state previously paying half. 83% of that appropriation to the town has been cut this year. So um, if we were to fully fund the Quinville, it's a, another 125000 But going forward, in future years, would it be two sixty? Yes, it's right. Okay. So the the difference to the town is zero or two sixty. Well, let, the Quinville is a reimbursable program, so you are fully funding that money every year. Okay, and then the fifty percent comes back as a reimbursable to the town. Right. So, so but so the difference doesn't... isn't between two two fifty and one twenty five. It's between two fifty and zero because we'd be on the hook for the whole thing. Right. All right, so the delta is 125, but the real cost would be 250. All right, so but just procedurally, so we will, we will need to vote on this most. I mean, there's potential for us to, to vote on this before town meeting. Yeah. Okay. And hope you'll okay. see what develops between now and then as yeah. far as negotiations are concerned, as far as the state's concerned, legally. Right. It's unfortunate the state's doing like, this to us, but yeah. on the other hand, I, I don't see any choice. As it stands now, though, so for example, this past fiscal year, did the state reimburse us for the 125? No, actually, it was less than the 50% last year. Yes. I asked Mary to run that, and we ate it to the tune of about $23,000, I think. And as it stands for this next year, if we don't do anything, then we will fund it ourselves for the 265 under That's the subject contract to bargaining agreement. or revocation okay. of, Revo this, of this uh, article. Of this statute. Oh. The All town right. meeting what? accepted it. When you mentioned bargaining, this was agreed to by the union whenever it was done in 1990 something 1999 the wording right yes um just to give you a little history in 1991 there was a class action suit because in 1991 the state cut the quinville contribution by 10 percent milton was a lead community 91 i think it was 93 maybe <coughs> 91 93 i thought it was 91 joe all right go ahead you could be right just so it was 11 other communities. I was a town administrator in Long Meadow then. I was part of the 11 communities in that class action suit. And the legislature ruled, um, a court judgment ruled, that um, the legislature could not bind further legislatures in terms of appropriation. So that hmm. if this a legislature 20 years later or 10 years later decided to cut the appropriation, then that was their right and privilege because they couldn't be bound by prior mm -hmm. legislatures. So what happened over the next 10 years is communities bargained language in their collective bargaining agreements to deal with that should it ever happen again. And as in our case here in Situate and a number of other communities I worked in, the language we bargained in good faith uh, across the table was what happens should the state not do its full 50% contribution. And a variety of communities said they might have bargained, we'll pay it. A number of communities said we'll only pay the state share. A number of communities aren't paying the state share or have no language at all. So that's why this is a very difficult issue across the Commonwealth because language either doesn't exist at all or it does exist, but it exists different ways. So um, we are in a rather stronger position, in my view, than other communities because we have this language that says we're not responsible, but it's either going to be addressed by the legislature addressed by a court decision, there's a number of other lawsuits out there, or third, which is my hope and intent, and I'm very optimistic about, it will be resolved at the labor table. So that's where we're at right now. All the more reason to sit on it yeah. until we see what happens. Tricia, I don't know if you can disclose this or not, but which one of those th two did we put in our contract, that we wouldn't match the state or that we wouldn't do either? Um, our language says if the state does not make its contribution, the town of Situate is not responsible right. for that payment. So it is the zero or 260 as we can zero or 260. Yeah. Okay, that's postponed. Big number. 17 municipal liens. I think this is a new one for us, isn't it? Yes. Uh, move the article 17 on municipal liens. It's actually 18. Article 18? It depends. Your numbering In the book, I, it's 17. Are. On the agenda, it's 18. So it's That's why I've been saying I moved the article. Lane. Article municipal. Lane. Yeah, there exactly. That's why I've been saying that. Just, so I move that, I move that article. Read that it's quick enough to, to see if the town will vote as authorized under MGL Chapter 40, Section 58 to impose a municipal lien charge for the purpose of non-payment of returned check replacement fees with a return check fee and the non-payment of recreation fees or take any other action relative thereto. My question was, what is recreation fees what is it I, so this is someone writes your check and it bounces 
and the bank charges you twenty five dollars, you can then lien them for the twenty five dollars. Right. Generally, now, it would probably be put on the property. Um, um, that's the lien. Now it's for the house or for the car. So next right. time. But what is down. is recreation? Is that just a general term? It has nothing to do with the rec department, right? Or for municipal liens, and John is right. It goes on the tax bill, and the lien is satisfied first. The town's already adopted to do this. We have it for water bills. We have it for sewer bills. But under the statute, the town meeting has to specifically adopt for what fees it may lien. So these are the two that Jane has recommended: the return check fee and non-payment of recreation fees, so what? that they would be liened. What's the recreation yeah, fee? That's my well, question. Well, they fees for their summer programs or okay. any other programs. Okay. So, so, it is rec department. so you did so it is rec department. and it was yeah. 500 yep. and okay. the checks bounced, so you yep. need the 500 plus a return check fee or something like that. So this is strictly for recreation fees for those two things? And return check fees. And return check fees. And return check fees. Right, right. But as they, as they relate to recreation fees? No. 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 Across first, the board. First part, yeah. the first part. Yeah. Any check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First part, Bounce any. a check, you get a lien. And Period. the second part is? Return check fee for, for recreation. Rec. Yeah. I got you. Rec department. A motion? Moved. Made. All right, that was, it was already made by Mr. Made Martin. and seconded second already. already. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. General bylaws, Article 18, I have here. It looks like it's uh, delinquent licenses. This, um, Jane and I have uh, requested to be put on the warrant. As you know, um, we've already accepted the statute that says if uh, any. Um, permit or um, if your taxes are outstanding then we can the board or the issuing agency can hold up granting a permit or anything application or whatever um, there's a, the statute is vague though because some solicitors or town councils read that that it has to be in arrears a year before the, the bill has to be outstanding a year before you can deny revoke or suspend what this statute does is it takes away the 12 month waiting period subject to our local bylaw so that anybody who has an outstanding fee to the town you would not have to issue any anything before the town uh, marriage license well I've exempted marriage license in certain exemptions but uh, what are the I, I, that was the only part that confused me except why did, why did we choose these two safety bicycle helmets open this, burning um, is at your pleasure if you want to keep them or not this language is verbatim for the town of Norfolk from where Jane originally hailed from, so this is her language. So, um, but so if I haven't paid my taxes, then you would say I can't get a bicycle helmet permit? No, no. no. It's exempting no, no. that. that if, if it wasn't exempt here. Let's say you want to put a deck on your house and you need a building permit. Yeah. If you didn't pay for a bike helmet fee or for a marriage license, you would not get that building permit. <coughs> so those are why those are exempted. Well, you exempted those, though. But yeah. as you know, we had that issue with various license renewals at the end of the year, and this would just make it more clean. How do you not pay your marriage license? You, you don't get your certificate unless you pay for it. That's where I'm kind of. I, I'm just live in Utah. I guess you're right. I, bouncing checks. There's dog licenses is a huge one. Yeah, I, I don't know it. that one. There's been some issues, Sean. You may have run into this too. There's been a couple issues lately for the animal that committee I was on. Um, where there was dog license issues where they weren't paid and people had a number of other things they were doing wrong and they would have liked to have a little teeth. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> That's awful. Um, <laughs> my response to lack of licensing is this it's a state law and people can be summonsed for failure to pay their dog license. So it's not out of the realm of possibility if we have five or six hundred unlicensed dogs to send them a notice saying they'll have to appear in court. That's what the statute provides for. Most communities don't do it. Some do them every five or six years. Um, but this would be another remedy in which to do it. I'm confused about this exemption. I don't want to beat this to death here. But I'm reading this, and it says, so the town can deny an application for a permit. So your, your deck example. Okay, if you owe taxes on your house, you can. This says we can deny a building permit. Correct. Yep. yep. The okay. one, the statute you've already accepted allows you to do that. On yeah. Real estate. But then this says, except such bylaws shall not apply to open burning bicycle helmets, dog licenses, marriage licenses. I read that to say to mean, you the ta If you owe taxes, then the town cannot deny you a marriage license. You have to take the tax thing out of it. This is not for real estate. This is any fee, any 
permit or whatever that the town made that somebody may owe the town, we would not issue them anything until they satisfied that outstanding fee. Except, Except those ones. Now, so you don't we, need we, so to we have would give exceptions. them, so you, you could owe money and you, we, we would still give you a marriage license. Yes. Or okay, a fine. helmet. Yeah, yeah, right. License. Okay. That's, that makes sense. So All the right. question is do we want to remove any of these exemptions? No, I, no, I don't For think safety no. reasons, no, I safety. wouldn't want to send no. someone on the street. You know, no, I, I, yeah. I agree with the bicycle helmet. Safety and no. Marriage license, we don't want to stop anyone from getting married. No. Nope. Yeah, and cookies course. and bake sales. I might make a suggestion, we don't want that don't to happen. Stuff. I mean, so I want that to happen. Uh, Not a bad one. It's a good work. one. I'll move Article 18 as written. And I'll second it. I'll third it. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Utility polls. This is at the request of Mr. Banger. Um, again, language we um, borrowed from another community. And I think it's fairly self-explanatory that really we could adopt Absolutely. a general bylaw that says when one goes, the other one comes in, the other's got to go. Uh -huh. I think Mr. Danny, he should make this motion because I know this is something you've been really harping on for a while. This is the most annoying, if so people understand. Basically, when you drive around town, you see two poles that are sistered up to each other, one of which is the old one and the other one's the new one. The utility companies have to take it down within 90 days, and you know, otherwise, I mean, they've been poles all over the place, and we're trying to get them to take it down. It's, it's really annoying. It's a danger, you know. And frankly, utility companies are being lazy about it. So, take it down. I'll second that motion. I'll move for that one. <laughs> move to the second. But before we, we, we think it's too easy, Norman. Does it have to be a whole pole? <laughs> yeah, whole pole, nothing but the pole. The reason I am okay. Yeah, down I understand. to look up and there was a brand new pole and another piece of a pole <laughs> dangling next to it, maybe about four or five feet tall, where they hadn't connected the two over, yet they cut the pole and like left the rest of it hanging it's in like much of a pole to me. Is that a double pole? We're going to try to figure <coughs> that out now whether we want to include segment of a pole. What it would be, Norman, is it's it's a removal of an existing pole. So I the existing pole, whether that's uh, like whether it's, it's the right whatever was there originally is existing, well, that's gone. There. You got it. That's the existing okay. pole. It's got to go for the so the new pole can get in there. The existing pole or part thereof. Next to the north pole okay. and south pole. Okay. <coughs> uh, motion has been made to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, general bylaw, snow removal bylaw. This one's at the request of Chief of Police and Mr. Bangert, um, which basically compels homeowners with sidewalks in front of their property to clear them of snow within 24 hours. This is a very common bylaw, um, and it's being suggested for adoption here. So it's legal? Absolutely legal if you adopt it. Homeowners bylaw. and Commercial store owners also, or just it says tenants of property. It says tenants of property. So the tenant and the so either the homeowner or tenants of property. There. So in a commercial, commercial building, the tenant, the store owner, would be responsible, not the owner of the building, the store. That's what this bylaw says. We looked at several actually, and um, I had something that was a little softer that I had in South Hadley, but um, chief weighed in and I deferred to his recommendation. I have in two issues. Public safety. I have two issues with this. Um, first is that I know from a, from a legal standpoint the law of snow, it's called natural and unnatural accumulation of snow and ice, is presently there's a, there's a case before the Supreme Judicial Court that could change the law altogether. What this bylaw in essence says is that people are obligated to clear paths on sidewalks. That's under our general town by ordinance. If the law as it stands, if you don't touch the snow, you're not liable for doing anything. The moment we're obligating them to do something, they could potentially be liable. That's the present law. It may change. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like reluctant to vote on it, although I totally understand it. It's a liability issue that everybody in town could be potentially held liable for something if somebody slips and falls on the sidewalks. The other thing is, Sean pointed out, is we're also now telling people they got to clear out the, fi the fire hydrant or obligating them. I think they should. But I just, I don't know, is that something that we want to tell people that they're obligated to do? No. You know why? <coughs> Again, liability I go to. No, no, it has nothing to do with that. I think it's 
good training and it lets the fire department guys know, especially the new ones, where the hydrants are. In the event there's a fire, they know where the hydrant is. They've been doing it for years. The fire department will go around and shovel them out, you know, after That's the storm, the all right? The and the guys know where they are. I, did Ricky Judge have a say in this? Because I'd be surprised if he'd go and along with that. if the storm only shovels it out, they'll be able to see it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm thinking more or less it's on a resident. You know what I mean? Just so the fire department knows where they are. It just. Could we ask, did I think checking in with Chief Judge might be a, a good idea here? Well, I mean, it's can the board's that? discretion. It's your warrant, and these are yeah. just recommended to you by the various departments and the general yeah, bylaws. I'd like to learn more about this one later. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not totally against it. I just, you know. I mean, I think it's an obligation. Again, I would hope that, that store owners wouldn't have to be mandated to. to, to Clear in front of the store. I know if I owned a store, I'd do everything possible to clear the store to get customers to come in. Yeah, right. Uh, it's also residential. It's also residential, which, yeah. which uh, you know, there's a lot of people walking to schools, etc. And if you plow the sidewalk, walks down to a certain house, and then he is, that homeowner doesn't clear the sidewalk and puts the children out in the street, you're going to defeat the whole purpose of clearing the sidewalks. I think we could have the chiefs and Al at the next meeting, maybe. Yeah, maybe just that. come in. Yeah. Even, with, yeah. even with the memo, if, 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 sure. you know, we don't want to bring too many people in. You know. I, have, I have a question about this, too. Um, and at, I don't mean to pile on, but it says owners and or tenants. So that, to me, seems vague. Who, who's the bottom line? So if the town, if we see something that's not cleared, how do who do we contact? We contact both. We contact one and leave it up to them to figure out, or so and the then is there a, the what's the penalty and all that? Owner is a homeowner, or the That's tenant straight. would be the person in rental property. Or okay. So whoever's occupying the home, right. I would say, is responsible for that. Okay. If it's a tenant, the, if it's the, a the rental person occupied. on site, essentially. Depends on the lease, right, John? I was going to say it depends on the lease. Then yeah, depends on whether or not the okay. landlord so obligates the tenant or whether or not the tenant. So that's, just, that's the landlord's duty. Yeah, yeah, okay. And is there um, and what if someone's in violation? Well, that's the $100,000 question, but we do have a mechanism for doing it. It's the non-criminal disposition of, you know, yep. okay. I mean, it's, I, you know, I can understand the shoveling of the, of the, uh, of the fire hydrants, but it'd be t it's a tough call again. Now, I don't want to, you know, compound this, the questions on this, but, when are you obligated to after an inch? Or it has to be five inches? Or it has to be three inches? I mean, well, that's just adding. In, in, <clears throat> let's let's get recommendations. And go ahead. I just was going to say. I mean, we just voted to support some more sidewalks. So if I own a house on Hollett Street and I have 100 feet of frontage and it's a sidewalk, now I'm obligated to clear that whole sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. That would be right. The, the, as written, it says that is under the control of the town of Sichuan. That abuts the property. It yeah. can be in the town. That's, that's so a we'll lot take a look at yeah. this. We'll hold off on this. Norman? With the fire hydrants, can you mandate that those people who have a fire hydrant in front of their home are mandated to clear that fire hydrant? Oh, that's what this is where, talking about. There are other people on each side, houses maybe two or three down the block, aren't mandated, yep. aren't under that mandate because they don't have a fire hydrant in front of their home. Can, can you do that? That's what this says. That's what this says. Yeah, I know you don't, you now know. again, we get into the whole front of the home, and what if what if it's in the middle of two pieces of property? And I, you know, I think it's, I think this is raising more questions, Mark. Yeah, uh, one person and not somebody else. Yeah. I, think I think when you have, uh, if there's a cast of folks looking at this, I think my, I have the same question regarding sewer drains. I've got one and a hydrant on my property. Yeah. I mean, it's a question I always had come up. So I think if if the issue is being discussed the broader scope of things, I could certainly see someone say, well, what about a fucking sewer yeah. drain? Is this, know, because it backs up in front of my house. Unless is this I'm causing more problems than it's solving? Yeah. I, and I don't know the answer to that, but we'll find out. All right? Why don't we postpone this till a future date, as they say. All right? Uh, squash can you watch good? Yep, never mind. Come on. Easements. This is, this is uh, easements sewers, regarding right? the sewer project, I believe. Yep. Article 21. All moved as written. As written. Seconded. Thank you. Moved as written and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All that's unanimous. Affordable Housing Trust land transfer. I probably think we're postponed. We want to postpone this. Let's postpone that. We're done. 
zoning bylaw revision. That's a later date. That's later. Date. That's also postponed, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. We got through that. Uh, annual license renewals. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the common vicular's licenses for Coffee Corner and for Harbor Scoops for 2010. Second. So, ice cream. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the license for the Davis parking lot at Hummer Rock for 2010. Second. Uh, motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Appointments, Constable. Move the Board Selectman vote to appoint Marilyn Johnson to the Beautification Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board Selectman vote to appoint Kathy Meeker to the Cable Television Committee. Second. Uh, motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move, Move the Board Selectman vote to appoint Nathaniel Green and Andre Fahat as constables in the town of Situa. Just before we go on, Nathaniel Green wasn't able to come tonight, right? Right. He, he is able to come on um, on March 2nd if you would yeah, whatever you wait do. until you meet him. That's okay. Sure. I'll retract the uh, vote to appoint just Andre Fahad. Okay. Second. Motion, motion to be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Town Administrator's report. Um, I'll be brief, noting the hour. You have the uh, period ending December 31st for the financial trend monitoring. Um, just some highlights. Our tax collections are a little ahead of the same period over January 2009, which is very good. Um, slight increases in tax liens and foreclosures. Um, but as noted, the permits and inspectional fees are still considerably lower than last year and actually much lower than two years ago. On the expenditure side, there's some good news on uh, utilities in terms of electricity and gas. Snow and ice, the jury's still out, but um, so far so good. Um, and uh, the unemployment account will officially go into deficit this month, and we're projecting 106,000 shortfall through June 30. We ask that you give us this report like periodically so but till town meeting so we'll know where yeah there's a, if you saw the draft special town meeting war and I have it as one of the things we're gonna have to move more money into in the special okay. and the, the only other one that stuck out was the overtime for the fire I know it went down but it's still he has enough money for that um, and I think we've talked about this in terms of if our revenues improve at all with local aid um, essentially what is happening is he has two funded but unfilled firefighter positions to the tune of about 106,000. So that is what he's been using to pay the overtime. I Those see. positions, as you know, are gone in FY11. So um, there'll be some real challenges there. But um, some of them, I believe, strongly can be addressed with management changes, but also uh, if we do get more local aid, that's the first place. I think I've told the board that the fire department will be the first add back in. Um, uh, we met uh, with the, we have, we're designated as a applicant in training, I guess, for the Green Communities Initiative. We had a long meeting last week about the necessary things that we have to do to enable the town to be one of the first communities certified. Um, I think we're making good progress. It allows the town to become in line for considerable money in grants that the Commonwealth is funding. and. You can't access them unless you're designated as a green community. We're first out of the gate. Um, there was just a funding round. Um, there was $30 million, I think, in the first round. And only, you know, those communities that, you know, sort of put some of these several hoops to jump in place. One of them is adopting the new stretch code, uh, which Neil has been to training about, which is having builders put green elements into building construction and things like that, which we'll see at a, a future town meeting. So um, some additional work on that that Laura Harbottle has sort of been administering. And then the last thing um, tonight, the board voted the building committee for the school department. The new regs for the state require a certified purchasing official to be on that. We're very fortunate because Kevin just uh, passed it. But um, under the charter, I serve as a chief procurement officer. 
and if we're actually going to be into substantial renovation and construction, it I think behooves the board and me to get some professional development. Um, I know a lot about 30B, but I need to start taking these courses. It's five courses over whatever number of years to finally be a CCPO. So the first of these is in April. It's about $450, but it's a four-day class, and they're each four days over the next couple of years. That's in Boston, is it? Uh, they're offered in Boston, uh, down the Cape, Worcester, and Huntington, Mass. <laughs> Where? So I am taking the one in Huntington, Huntington Mass, Mass, which is near Conway. Yeah. The IG's office called me and said, I think you checked the wrong thing. You live in Situate. And I said, no, I checked No one ever that. takes it in Huntington. <laughs> you, you must have made a mistake. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's it. That's it. Other business, starting with whoever? Sure. Uh, just to let you know that I had mentioned this before, there is a St. Patrick's Day parade. Congratulations to the Chamber right. of Commerce and for all those people in the subcommittee. Uh, it is going forward. Um, I was going to notice, walking around here, um, Tricia, I don't know if it's you, or the lights. Great. Thanks, Al. Al's doing a great job. I just want to say, if Al's watching, good job. I walked into the selectman's room. Light turned on. I was like, wow, kind of we spooky. Have motion uh, sensors now and a number of offices. It's looking good. Uh, Looking great. Um, the other thing is, um, I'll briefly, um, Joe and I went to a meeting on Saturday for um, seawalls at the uh, GAR, and we uh, certainly addressed different issues that people raised concerning the seawalls and the concerns raised, and I think it was very productive. Uh, Joe did a good, and you know, obviously spoke to it, and um, I, I spoke a little bit, and um, um, obviously people raised concerns about the money and trying to replace them and do something, and I think it was very productive. So. We'll see what happens from there. The last thing I was going to say is uh, Thursday, which is the 18th, pitchers and catchers, so spring is coming. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Just one thing, Tricia, or maybe Joe knows. A couple of residents have asked me about their, their, seasons pa their season pass holders for Widow's Walk, and typically they get their application or the renewal for the following year by December. Are we revisiting yep. what? Okay. That's coming up the next yeah, meeting, I think. You, with you're going to get a pack do it because there's new. a fee increase. Okay, tied that's to what the recommended budget. All that right, we have. that's what this person I, and I said. That's yeah. probably what it is. So, all right, that that was all I had, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a, a quick comment: to high school sports, both your hockey and uh, basketball teams had great seasons. In fact, Situ is ranked like number 17th in the state. In basketball um, and their playoffs are coming up in the next couple of weeks so they should have home games so get out there and support them the only thing I have is um, you know when we bought when the town bought the uh, Situ of Marine Park there are a bunch of reasons for it including you know enhancing recreation and increasing the marina and open space but maintaining a commercial boatyard so I was I was really pleased at the last waterways meeting to learn that um, a, a lobster boat got hauled out about two and a half weeks ago now, and uh, Situa Boat Yard pull, pulled it out because they had some engine problems or mechanical difficulties. And they were able to pull the boat out within a couple days' notice, do the work on it, and, and have that boat taken care of. If that boat yard hadn't been there, that fisherman would have had to take that boat probably down to Plymouth or some other location, which obviously would be you know a real hard thing to get a disabled vessel in this weather out of the harbor, down to some other place, and put that business somewhere else. So, to my knowledge, that's the first uh, you know wintertime haul out that had that boatyard not been there, wouldn't have been able to do it. So the plan is working, and uh, I commend the guys at the Situate Boat Works for, for, for doing that. And uh, it's already starting to you know reap rewards for our commercial fleet. And that's Great. it, Mr. Chair. It was a good Thank size you. boat. Yeah, it was a big boat. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I have nothing. So we'll move on to correspondence. Is it correspondence or minutes? Uh, I don't think we have anything. And I don't think we have any minutes. correspondence, so we'll move to minutes. Move the minutes of January 6, 2009. I'll second that. Motion been made and seconded on the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 9.30 p.m. I'll second that, too. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, folks. It's unanimous. Good night, and thank you all.